Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition All Hikata Chronicle, Berlin Bloodlines. This is our very first episode, technically episode one, A Dragon Amongst Peacocks. Let's meet our players, starting with Avery. Hello, hi. It's so it's so nice to see you all here for our first episode. My name's Avery, and this evening I will be playing Unsere Gnädige Herr, Edgar Veit. Edgar Veit. It's like Gnädige Herr. And for anyone who doesn't speak German, Gnädige Herr means like elegant sir or, or gracious sir. As? Hi, I'm As, and today I will be playing Adelaide Nairaja. Indeed. Everybody's weird cousin. <laughs> You're all everybody's weird cousin. I hate to break mm -hmm. it to you. It's true. Luna? Hello, hi, I'm Luna, and tonight, today, whatever, mm -hmm. I will be playing Imogen Lamia. Mm -hmm. Rachel? Hello, everybody, I'm Azure, or Rachel, and today I will be playing Maria Russolini, the Mistress of Ghosts. Yes, we love a Mistress of Ghosts. And finally, last but not least, Ramos. Hello, I'm Gil Ramos, aka Ramos the Nomad, and I tonight I will be playing, uh, I believe... My memory corrects uh, <laughs> is correct. Uh, it's Aust, uh, Tulio Giovanni. Aust. 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 A L S. Aust. This is why we don't speak German on camera. Heute Abend spiele ich als Tulio Giovanni. Soll ich mit dir Deutsch sprechen, mein gnädiger Herr? Anyway, I'm Huddy, I speak German, and also I'm your storyteller this evening. As always, this is a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition actual play. We've gone over our safety and consent, but please check in with yourselves as your well-being is important to all of us who are playing. All the content warnings for this game will be down in the description below. So if you all are ready, lass uns anfangen, which means let us begin, and let's return to Berlin, finally, in the modern nights of 2024. The last decade in Berlin, and let's be honest, in the world of darkness, has been a tumultuous one. The renewal of the Inquisition of old, monster hunters eager to purge the earth of anything not like them, the bloodlines of death coming together to form one clan, one family, the Anarchs laying waste to the traditions of old, turning their ire on the ivory tower, tearing the Prince of Berlin limb from limb in full view of mortals, while the sheriff and scourges of the Camarilla here in Berlin have embarked on a mission of retribution. The head of your clan, Olivia Dunsern, decreed that all in the family were to remain as haven-bound as possible for a sum total of 11 years. According to the oracular ability she has always relied on, but has leaned quite heavily into in the last few years. But word has finally come down through the family that the confinement has been lifted, and soon Olivia will call a family dinner and expect everyone to attend. But for now, you can take a free breath, at least a metaphorical one, and begin your unlives again, to whatever end that may be. We begin our scene tonight with you, Adelaide. In your haven, the one that was gifted is not the right word, but the one that was rented out to you by Heidi, inside of a cemetery in Charlottenburg. Right now, you're in the above portion, not the below portion, where you sleep. And you are brushing your ghoul's hair, Bella. Bella has been bugging you for the last few nights to be able to use some of the oils that Sheriff Kasim has brought you over the years you've been here, the many gifts that he's brought in you, one of them being oils for your hair and oils for your skin. And she really wants you to do her hair the way that you do her do your hair. And right now you're brushing her hair through with oils that smell like cardamom, cloves, and jasmine. Oils that remind you of home when you smell them. Perhaps maybe that is why they have remained untouched on your vanity. As you brush your hair, can brush her hair, can you tell me what unlife has been like with with her in this new place for you for the last six years without your sire? Adelaide has been spending as much time with Bella trying to show her what it could be like being one of the Nagaraja, what the clan 
the bloodline should be, mm-hmm. not not what we have been made out to be, which is absolutely true. <laughs> We're monsters. Mm-hmm. We are the boogeymen, but that doesn't mean we have to act like it behind closed doors. Of course. What has your feeling been towards Bella in the sense where you know that at one time Alexander put in a formal request for her embrace, but he has since, for all intents and purposes, vanished from the city of Berlin. Have you taken into any consideration of taking that up for yourself? Yes. Um, Given Adelaide as a person, she treats Bella like the daughter that she's never going to have. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, as you brush and style Bella's hair, she reaches behind her, grabs your hand, and just very quietly says, You're like the mother I always wanted. You're the daughter that I always wanted. Are you going to make me your true daughter some night? I'm not putting any pressure on it. Oh, I know, I know, Bella. It's, um... I'm very happy with you. One night. I want you to enjoy the sun as much as you can. For the time being. I do enjoy walking the the woods around the cemetery. How was your walk this morning? Oh, it was beautiful. It was so sunny and warm and there were so many birds. And spring is coming. Good. Also, I, I saw a lot of fresh graves. I took note of them all. Excellent. You're doing such a good job. I'm so proud of you, Bella. I really am. She squeezes your hand. It really means a lot to me when you tell me that. It's important that you mean the things you say. Don't ever forget that. As you finish up with her hair, you hear a car pulling up to the gravel drive of your small home. And Bella just sort of smiles. Must be your beau again. Maybe. Why don't you finish putting these things away? And I'll go see who it is. It's probably Cassie. It's more than likely Cassie. It's absolutely Cassie. Or Heidi. The rent is due next week. <laughs> I'll do what you And say. so, I had a little hand Bella the brush and kind of make sure that her hair is mm-hmm. falling as perfectly as possible. And, and she admires she admires herself for a few minutes before she starts cleaning up. And then heads to the door. You and head, opens it. And you head to the door. You, of course, see not just Kasim, you also see Heidi. <clears throat> Heidi is, of course, still Kasim's scourge. And they have traveled here together, and it seems in two separate cars. And Kasim is wearing a um, khaki trench coat, khaki pants to match, and a white shirt. And uh, Heidi is dressed like she is uh, ready to go to a techno club at any moment. She's wearing um, latex and leather and a harness and uh, two or three dog collars full of studs and piercings. She has just a shock of um, cold blonde hair that sort of is like in a, in a mohawk that doesn't do anything to cover her sort of gray mottled face. But she doesn't seem that worried about hiding it. So Adelaide will get closer and kind of nod to Heidi and then smile at Kasim. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a surprise. Kasim inclines his head to you, almost in a bow. He says, is it really that much of a surprise anymore? No, but it's always good to see you. Are you you guys going somewhere, or? We are. We, uh, never have a free night. Uh, If we did... I would take you somewhere besides here. Maybe soon. Apparently we're allowed out again. Oh, that is wonderful news. Would you walk with me just for a moment? I have to give you something. Of course. And she'll kind of look at Heidi, kind of 
Heidi has um, a set of keys in her hand and an envelope, but she doesn't make any indication to follow. And so Adelaide will wrap her arm around Cassim's and fall into step with him. In addition to holding your arm, he also puts his other arm, his hand over yours, as you walk towards the forest path here in Kronowald <laughs> Forst. And he says, um, how have things been here? Any issues, any troubles, anarchs or otherwise? It's been relatively quiet here, honestly. You know, if you ever do need any sort of additional security, you need only ask. Kasim, that's... I can take care of myself. I know that you can. I do worry, though, during the day. I know Bella, I know. Bella is not uh, experienced in fighting. No, that will probably be next. Perhaps the Lamia could teach her a thing or two. I might have to consider that. I don't need to speak with Imogen, so... I, um... I wanted to apprise you of what's going on with the Camarilla at the moment. As you know, Prince Heidenstein is... Long met the final death, the hands of the Anarchs. And the Primogen have still not yet come to a decision on who will lead the Ivory Tower here now. The Anarchs have been pushed back as much as we can, diverted Second Inquisition to their domains, had a great victory, burning Sahira's haven to the ground. But still they have not yet made a decision. They are banding about a few names, a ventrue child of the prince before Breidenstein. Breidenstein's child, Stefan, the Malkavian. And mine. Yours? You have been doing a fine job. Even if you are just interim. I am... I cannot be effective in my job as sheriff. In my duty as sheriff, were I to be made prince, Adelaide. No, you wouldn't. And I am not beloved in the Ivory Tower. My clan is not, and I am the only one of my clan at the moment in Berlin belonging to the Ivory Tower. And I am fearful is not the right word. I am concerned that it might just be a ploy to get me a larger target on my back. It's very possible that that is the case. And I must ask, and I do not want to, should they decide that I should be prince? And should I make plans to immediately renew the promise with your clan? Do you believe that there would be some way to persuade them to come to my aid, should it come to that? With the structure of the family as it is? No. We need to come to a better understanding as a whole. We've been separated for over a decade. That is true. And separation from family warps the mind quite significantly. Adelaide's gonna reach up and put her hand on his cheek. He takes his fingers, and you can tell when you put his, your hand on his cheek, he's warm. He has activated the blush of life to walk with mm -hmm. you. And he places two fingers against your lips, and then puts his hand over his heart. And if you could make me an intelligence and etiquette roll. Yeah. I'm super good at that, being Stockholm for someone mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, this is specifically why I'm asking for this roll. Yep. Starting off strong with three dice. And three successes. Excellent. As he does this, it seems strange at first. Perhaps you even are a little concerned 
with his two fingers coming so close to you. And then a memory flashes in your mind. From when you were still mortal, and Alexander brought you into his haven, into the area of his family where the Nagaraja were. And you saw them doing this, the fellow Nagaraja. Always doing this with each other. But Alexander would never do it with you. Ever. And you remember now it's a sign of love and devotion. Her hand kind of presses a little harder onto his cheek. And she'll repeat the gesture. He smiles. And as you repeat the gesture, he brings his hand down to take both of yours and his. And as he does so, he slips something into your hand. But he holds his hands there for just a moment before you can see what it is. I have... What is this? It's a gift. I have... I worry about you, Adelaide. And not that because I do not think that you can take care of yourself. I just, I know the dangers of the city more intimately than anyone I believe. And I know what I will do When I saw you again, I was filled with the most joy and the most fear I've ever felt at the same time. Because I knew if I lost you again, what I would do. And if I, what I will do. And he then releases his hands and in your hand is a necklace. It has sand in a bottle, it's very small. It's a piece of home. I... The night Alexander told me that you met final death, he came covered in blood, in your blood. I tasted it, to be sure, all over his hands. I kept some before I embarked on my mission of revenge. But now that you are alive, I feel no longer the compulsion to keep it. Instead, I have used it to create a ward for you. If you wear this, no kindred can touch you. Not even me. The theme, this is too much. There is Thank nothing, you. Adelaide, that is too much for me to give to you. She'll kind of wrap it in her hands and hold it to her chest. So just when I'm wearing it, you can't touch me? That's correct. Could I touch you now? Be careful. If I have you in my arms, I'm afraid I will never let you go. Well, at least for a little while. Then she'll lean up and kiss him. He'll kiss you back. The moment lingers quite a long time, and you believe he is, as you believe so often with Kazim, he's telling the truth. He doesn't want to leave you here. He doesn't want to be away from you. He doesn't want to let you go. But he is a man of morals and honor. He does eventually break apart from you, reluctantly. And as he lets you go, you hear a sound of thunder rumbling in the distance. And Kasim looks up at it. And usually Heidi tells me when it's supposed to rain. It's strange. Hmm. Um, I, I should let you get yes, back. Yes, I do have to. I do have things I need to do, unfortunately. Um, um, Heidi has something for you as well. So you should head back to the, to the house. We should. He'll kiss you once again on the forehead and walk with you back to your house. And Heidi is sitting there just with the keychain going like this, obviously getting bored. And she says, yes, 
Okay, very good. You had your your uh, lovey dovey thing in the woods. Okay. Um, your eloquence knows no bounds, Heidi. I have always said so. Um, Adelaide, I have something for you. Um, one, mm -hmm. this is from the sheriff. Enjoy. Have a car. What? Kasim thought it would be too big of a gesture, and I was supposed to tell you it's not from him, but I really could not care less. Here you go, have a car. I was just gonna look up at Kasim while holding Kasim, her hand if out. Kasim, <laughs> well, actually, he has the blush of life. He is blushing. He's blushing. This, this is the line of too much after. Yes. Thank you very much, Adelaide. Please, I, I just want. It is quite a distance in here for you to then, now that you, you're confined, you said your confinement is now over, now much easier for you to get to where you need to be. It was the only gesture, a thought behind it. And I can come see you? I would like that very much. I'm... Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm staying in the Charlottenburg Palace at the moment. Ah... It is uh, very extravagant and very not to my taste, but I could meet you outside of it and we could go somewhere more suited to us. I would like that very much, Alexander. Like Alexander is hasn't been heard of, have, have you? No, not okay. at all. Then I would like that very much if we could go somewhere. If he does contact you, Adelaide, if you need me. I'm very fast. I know. Thank you for the gifts. I believe Heidi is about to explode. You should probably go. Yes. And Kasim gets into his own car, which of course Heidi drives him around. So he gets to the passenger side. And Heidi gets herself up off of your brand new car. And I actually cannot, I did not write it down because I'm the best storyteller ever. So I actually don't remember which car you said that you wanted. It was very late and uh, literally looked up safety ratings. Yeah, it's a, for the... it's a Volkswagen. It's a Volkswagen. Yeah. It's a Volkswagen. It's mm -hmm. nice, too. Fit a lot of people in it, like your whole coterie. Anyway. Yeah, like a whole coterie. <laughs> Heidi um, rolls her eyes and she says, well, um, you can uh, tell your um, cocky Scottish cousin. Congratulations. Yancy has reached out. Uh, but until you get a meeting with Yancy, unfortunately, uh, you have to uh, go do this for him. Do what for? It's in the manila folder. You read it. Um, also, I put a phone in there. Um, I'm trying to, you know, we don't have the Shrek nut anymore, obviously, for a long time now. But um, here's a phone. It is uh, secure. I put all of your cousin's numbers into it. So you can call them and text mm -hmm. them. And it's secure from the Inquisition. I promise. I'm the fucking best. Of course, Heidi, I would expect nothing less than absolute perfection from anything you do. Okay, I don't need the flattery. I'm not dating you. <laughs> no, but you are my landlord and you can kick me out at any point. <laughs> I mean, if Kasim becomes prince, I'm going to be a fucking sheriff. You are? So... <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I said if he becomes prince, he better make me sheriff. I'll make sure he follows through. Have and fun. I'm sure he's going to make me give you the house anyway, so whatever. Or he'll just buy you a nicer house if he has all the prince money. Have fun tonight, Heidi, wherever you're going. Kill anarchs. Always a good night. Always. She gets into the black sedan and pulls out pretty quickly and drives away. And you can see the chagrin on Kasim's face as she does a quick spin. <laughs> half turn and speeds out of the cemetery. Allie's gonna look at the keys and the car and the envelope. And then turn and head back inside, like pulling things out of the envelope as she goes. There's only one thing in the envelope besides the phone. Mm -hmm. And it's a um, letterhead from Peacock Island. From back in the day when Peacock Island was a place where people could actually go visit. Uh, quite a long time ago. Long mm. before your time. Long before you were born. Long before you were dead. Um, and it is an invitation. And it says, Ich lade Sie zu mir nach Hause ein. Kinder der Herr Kater kommen Sie frei und ohne Bösheit. Ich brauche Ihre Hilfe. 
I invite you to my home, children of the Hikata. Come without, come free and without malice. I need your help. Bella? Bella's immediately at the door. I have to go out. All right. Are you going to be all right here by yourself? Of, of course. Is it, is it all right if I, um, make that food that you don't like that smells bad? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, could, if you could just maybe air out the house. Of course. Yeah. Thank of course. you. I, I appreciate it. Mean, here in Germany, we love fish sticks and spinach. It's a smell. And we put eggs on top of it. I I know. I'm I am happy that it makes you happy. Also, we have a car now, so maybe in like a week or so after we check in with everyone, we go somewhere. And do something. That sounds like fun. Okay. Be safe and uh Adelaide's gonna walk up to her, kiss her on the forehead. And then lock the door as she's going out. Mm -hmm. And are you going to inform anyone? Or are you just going to show up at everyone's house as they showed up at your house uninvited six years ago? Why would we call? <laughs> All right. So I know where they live. <laughs> here, so as you get into your car, um, a light spattering of rain has started. And you know the best order in how to get everyone. Closest to you is going to be Edgar. Yeah, then like you're... Adelaide's sitting at the wheel looking. Farthest away from the Fowl and Insel is going to be Tulio, uh, Tulio and Maria. Mm -hmm. So easiest to pick people up and do it in a big round and then just swing all the way back around. So mm -hmm. closest again is going to be Edgar. And um, that might feel a little bit satisfying um, going to see Edgar who totally rudely came to your haven six years ago. With demands. With demands. And not nice, either. <laughs> Could have just Could've said what was nicer. going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know exactly where everyone is, where to go, and you've decided you don't want to text them. And um, it's time to take a <laughs> drive in, your, in Adelaide's new whip. Um, and you pull out of the cemetery. And we will get to you meeting up with everyone in a minute. Um, we're going to move our scene now to Edgar. Also in Charlottenburg, in your high-rise as well. Um, Edgar, it's been another six years here with Aelin for a sum total of 11 years, as it has been for everyone else. Um, and the confinement is over. You got the news from your mother personally. And um, let me ask you, Edgar, as you're laying here with Aelin in bed, having shared an intimate uh, moment, sh shown your love in a physical way, and are now entangled together or um, haptia umamt, as we would say here in Germany. How has your relationship with Aelin progressed or regressed, if you'd prefer it that way? And what are the feelings now that the confinement is over, knowing you have to bring her to meet your mother soon? Well, that's a lot of, that's a lot of complicated answers all bunched up together. Um, Feel free to ignore any that I asked. No. Um, <laughs> the the last six years have been full of some pretty big conversations um, between Edgar and Aelin. Um There's been a full acknowledgement of, of feelings and perceived responsibilities. Um, they're running one of the most successful investment firms in Berlin together. Yes, there. Um, Aelin has been on the cover of Das Spiegel in the last few years. Yeah, so they're Edgar maintaining the mask that is Edgar um, has set up a system where if any untimely happenstance were to end his life um, that roughly 75% of his assets um, and sole ownership of the company would pass to Aelin um, the other 25% of his assets um, are split between um, Kenneth and Isabella alright um, including um, 
his summer home in uh, Glasgow um, will pass on to Kenneth in particular. Um, as far as his relationship with Aelin, um, they, there have been talks of legal marriage. Um, there, at least from Edgar's point of view, um, he's never needed a piece of paper to tell him how he feels about Aelin. But as far as protecting her from his mother, her name being Duncern is certainly something that would lend her a certain measure of protection. That is that is um, Edgar's hope. If I yes. have to understand that correctly. All right. Yeah. Understood. That is that is his thought process. And I suppose um, then my final question is, does Aelin call you Edgar? Or does Aelin call you, and you can correct me if this is the wrong pronunciation, um, Finlay? Fionlach. Fionlach. Um, that's, easy for, that's easy for a German player to say. <laughs> uh, it, goes, it goes back and forth, okay. I think. Just depending on uh, how much trouble it goes in. <laughs> sure. All right, so set our scene here. Uh, you're in bed with Aelin. Um, laying on her chest, um, you can hear her heartbeat from one side and hear the rain that is getting pretty intense up on the roof of your penthouse. Um, you have the up all night merit, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I need two rouse checks, uh, one for blush of life and one for your nightly. One success, one failure. Okay, so you're at two hunger now. And... For clarification, mechanically, what Up All Night gives you is, uh, is the best use of it really is to help with frenzy checks. Um, but in a narrative way, when you activate Blush of Life, your humanity spikes. So everything that you feel is much more intense. All the emotions suddenly become much more human-like than when an average kindred activates Blush of Life. So as you lay here in bed and listen to her heartbeat, it's um, not erratic. It's still elevated, but it's going back down to its resting heart rate. Yours is also elevated, of course, special life, but that's not going to last very long, only lasts for an hour. And as you lay there, um, she has one hand on your back and she seems to be drawing something on your back, writing something on your back, and she's humming a tune that you don't know. And she just keeps going back and forth. She's writing from right to left um, as she's writing clearly an Arabic script of some kind. And what story is it that you're scribing into my skin tonight? It's not a story. It's a song. Mm -hmm. It feels nice. It should. It's a song about all the things I like about you. You get a very different version of me than most people do. I believe that's true. I get the best version of you. You get the version of me that I wish I could be all the time. I know that. But I've... It's... I don't know how to say it, right? I, you know, before we met, I was around many ghouls. Many people who had tasted the blood of vampires saw the way that they would act around them almost immediately. It was never like that with me and you. I don't know why. But now, I don't know when it started the needing you. Ich meine nicht nur Kopelis, obwohl das schon nett ist. Perhaps. It's crazy as it sounds. Uh, when it's right, it's right, you know. Yes. Du bist wie für mich gemacht. 
Um, I have to ask. Um, do you, you have any desire to be what I am? I know it's something that we don't really talk about often. I'm afraid to give you the answer, Edgar. Why? I'm afraid you'll think me foolish. I think you are many things, Aelin, but um, and a fool shall never be among them. Not once have I ever desired it. <laughs> and so it, and so it is. Do you want me to desire it, Edgar? No. Then why do you ask? I'm afraid. That's a broader question. <laughs> you, you said it. My mother. Baron Sahira. Myself. Or rather who I have to be. Do you think if I was like you it would be easier? I don't know. And the not knowing contributes to the fear. Edgar, I want you to know that if something happens to me, it's okay. <sighs> it's not okay with me. Souls never forget. That's what my mother used to tell me. You are special in ways that I don't fully understand. And this goes beyond the love that we share. I don't understand what you mean. When you pray, when you interact with what you believe, there are things that I can see that are not entirely mundane. Not mundane, meaning something like from your blood that happens no. to me. Let me be very clear. I am not sure other than providing you some measure of longevity that my blood does anything for you. Whatever is greater in you belongs solely to you. It needs no aid, it needs no support from my, ah, fuck, I dread to say it, my curse. That's, that's out to take in at uh, this particular moment, Edgar. <laughs> I, I, I don't really know what to do with that information. I'm just me, Edgar. I'm not... Nothing. I would like to... meet more people that believe what you believe. So that I can see if this is... widespread. You want to come to temple with me? 
Now that our confinement is over, I would... I... I'd be very happy to take you. There's a lot of fire, though. We believe in work with fire. Our, go I, um... our god is a god of fire. Then let us hope that I may pass through those flames unabated. No crosses, though, I... We predate the cross. <laughs> Good. I can't stand them. Ah... Uh, I... I think I'm gonna take a cigarette. Uh, she moves over so that you can get up. And she stands herself up, grabs onto your face, and pulls you in for a kiss. Have your cigarette have something to eat and you come meet me in the shower in a little bit hey I can do that she walks over to the bathroom I think for a moment Edgar just stares at himself in the mirror above the bed and I think he will in that moment actually activate since the unseen and look at himself sure and just analyze every detail of yourself well you have nothing supernaturally hidden and i need you to be very specific for no reason of what you're looking at i mean and Hell. He first studies his face and then following a hunch he'll just kind of roll over on his side and see if he can see anything on his back. Well, in fact, you do. You see Arabic script written in light on your back. You don't feel it, though. I think in that moment, the hunger kind of gurgles. And... Edgar does this from time to time just to remind himself of who he is. He'll let his fangs descend and just run his thumb along them, feeling the pain mm -hmm. of the bite. Or he'll like the wound closed go to the fridge grab a bottle of cold dead blood and look out over the peacock island while he drinks his blood and smokes a cigarette sure and as you do that adelaide you've arrived at edgar's uh penthouse apartment and as you pull in you see someone else pulling in someone you know um it's a cousin of yours you haven't seen them in quite a long time it's carla lamia She's also driven her own car here. She sees you as you pull in and get out, bows her head to you. Cousina, hello. How are you this evening? I'm well, and you? I can't complain. Are you here to see Edgar? Are you here to see Edgar? No, I am sent on a goodwill from my mother to Edgar. I see. I'm here to How protect his school. Ah. Well, good luck with that. I believe if you are here to see him, we are going in the same direction. Yes. Shall we walk together? Adelaide, Adelaide's gonna just start walking. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to face Carla. You see as... Mm -hmm. Carla walks a little bit faster than you do, more purpose than you. Carla has a very sharp looking short sword tucked behind her belt. Can I insight check our cousin? Certainly. What's in Perfect. There? Six successes. Carla doesn't seem to be hiding anything. Perfect. Mm hmm. 
She's just acting like every other Lamy I've ever met, including Imogen. Yeah, just making sure that we're actually here to protect the ghoul. Mm -hmm. So, are you enjoying your time out of confinement? Or is this the first time you've been out? Just it's walking up? It's not the first time I've been out, but my enjoyment comes from my acts of service. She walks into the private elevator, presses the button. And you, is this your first time out of confinement? There's like this dark chuckle. Yeah. Well, you can't really escape yourself now, can you? Perhaps you should speak with my mother sometime. She might be able to illuminate some things for you. On our condition. Thank you. You're welcome. And then staring at the door. Carla's also staring at the door. You arrive. Dings. And uh, Carla doesn't make any indication to inform Edgar that she's here. She just walks over to his door and stands there. Is Edgar's door locked? I assume so. Adley's gonna try the door. And then... You have security on that door, Edgar? If someone tries to open it when it's locked? It sends a notification to his phone. Then you receive it. Is there a camera outside? Yeah. It does have, I do have one point in security system for this mm -hmm. haven. So. And you also see that Carl is here. Adelaide's looking directly at the camera. Edgar's not even going to bother putting a shirt on. He put his suit pants on after he got out of bed. That's fine. Um, he'll just walk over to the door and check the wards that he's placed, the ward against spirits. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's intact. Seems to be. Open the door. To what do I owe the esteemed pleasure? I came to pick you up. Carla's here on something else. Edgar will kiss Carla on both of the cheeks and will just look to Adelaide and nod. Please come in. Actually, it's going to go inside and flop down on the couch. <laughs> Adelaide, you can hear someone taking a shower in this apartment. Car Carla, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? My mother was concerned when she offered to have protection put on your door and you refused. She was afraid that perhaps you did not trust us and I am here on that goodwill. I will protect your ghoul. It was less a matter of trust and more a matter of... I am sorry, cousin. Your reasons don't concern me. My mother's <laughs> will does. And that is why I will always value your company, Carla. I'll be outside your door. I appreciate that. No. And I think in this moment, um, Adelaide would see that um, from the collar down, um, Edgar's body doesn't much look like someone who's been a banker or a lawyer all their life. Um, there are scars on his uh forearms that are usually covered that look kind of that look like burns from rope um there's a puncture wound in the right side of his rib cage that is scarred that goes in one side and out the other um there's uh and he, <laughs> he has this stupid little heart tattoo on the back of his right shoulder that just says dad inside of it Okay, seeing that it says dad, um, 
Adelaide's going to use Sensei Unseen to see if maybe there's some more going on with the and tattoo. Since Edgar said what... that he is not wearing a shirt. Yeah. Oh, shit. You see that there is some sort of golden light written in a language you know. Mm-hmm. It just seems to be words of love, devotion, affection, protection, loyalty. They don't make a coherent sentence. They're just words. Right. Well, um, let me get dressed. And I assume we're kidnapping the others. It's not kidnapping. I'm not going to make them go. I'm going to ask first. <sighs> Of course. Um, Put the shirt on. You know you're the reason I put covers on the couch, right? I'll just head to the bedroom and get dressed. Um, before he comes out, he'll pop into the master bathroom. Mm hmm didn't want to take a shower with me. It's disappointing. Uh, I'm so sorry, my darling. Uh, we, we have guests, and I'll be leaving. Uh, Is this a guest I should meet, or should I pretend I'm not here? Uh, my cousin Carla is on the door. She'll be there until uh, I return. Okay. Let's try and get some rest. Uh, you've got that. You've got that international meeting tomorrow. Yes, I'll um, make sure to show you the video afterwards. I appreciate that. Um, I have something to ask of you. You can ask me anything, Edgar. I need you to send a text from my phone. I'm going to leave my phone here with you um, to both of my godchildren that I would like to see them both. Text them separately, not a group chat, and refer to them in the singular. Uh, Any location you'd like to see them in? Here. Tomorrow night, I'd like for you to meet them. I'd love to meet them. They are they are like me, yes, more mortal. Yes. You you met Kenneth before. Oh yes. That's right. Um I hope he is doing better. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath, sweetheart. I can't, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Negger will kiss her on the cheek. I shouldn't be out for more than a few hours, so um, if there's anything you need, um, I'll have Adelaide send a text to my phone and so... Number. I'll be fine, Edgar. I know you'll be fine. But if you want me to pick anything up for you on the way home, I... Just go and spend time with your family. It's been a decade, Edgar. I can see my parents every day. I would like to meet them at some point. I'll see if I can arrange a meeting after the sun goes down. Not common, unfortunately. Uh, we could go for drinks. That's easier to hide than food. Do your folks drink? That's a that actual. Why? Why didn't I ask that question first? Well, of course they drink. I Good. told you our religion predates the Abrahamic religions. It's what right. it's based off of. 
Alright. Very well. Uh, Alright. I love you. I will be home soon. Have a good time, Edgar. Also, we should see about buying your parents a house. And it'll just hold <laughs> <leave. laughs> Delaying the inevitable as long as possible. Uh, yeah. Uh, and as he walks back out, kind of straightening his suit. Have you got a fucking phone yet? Or are we still slumming it in the 90s? Is there a balcony, though? Yeah. Adelaide's yes. out there. <laughs> yes. Edgar yeah. has a balcony that oversees the fallen and so. Mm -hmm. Adelaide's trying to see if she can see her house from here because she yes, you can, can see Edgar's tower. <laughs> yes, you can. Perfect. So what are we doing? What, what's this about? You don't ever... Well, you do come over, but... This doesn't feel like that. I got you what you wanted, I think. I'm going to get you out of the house. I... Towards your goals. Accomplish my goals without help, but I do appreciate it. Where are we going? We're going to, I think... She's like mapping out her head. Imogen. Your mother's house is after... We're going to go pick up Imogen. Right. Are we are we just getting together to have a good time or Hopefully it goes well, but um we're gonna go into Brigade, right? Or Peacock Island. Peacock Island. We're going to Peacock Island. Uh... I got an invitation. Now let's go. I'll drive. <laughs> I need to grab a few things before we leave if we're going to the Peacock Island. Um, we don't have all night, so... I'm aware. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm... Don't snap at me. We talked about this. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. That was... Rude. Yeah, yeah. That, that one. Uh, do you know how to use a gun? We don't need guns, Edgar. That's great for you. And Edgar will go to the uh, the secret compartment at the dinner table, press the button, and as the drawer slides out uh, with his shoulder holster and his pistol at it. He'll just strap so it on. I'm to understand bed. you are going to the dragon's home with weapons. Just so I understand as a storyteller. All right. Or rather with a weapon <laughs> singular i don't know if that makes it better uh but you know don't know how it could possibly get worse so as you and adelaide head out and adelaide drives again as i said in her new whip towards uh stiglitz zeelandoff which is where olivia lives but hannah lohi has her own manor home we're gonna check in on Imogen. Hi, Imogen. <laughs> Move Hello. our scene over now to there. Um, right now, you're in your favorite place, or a place where you spent many, many years, um, in your garden. And here it is. The rain is really coming down, really intensely coming down. And uh, you are uh, not an old kindred like Kasim. Um, you absolutely check your phone. There is no mention of rain at all. And and if you had known, I mean, you check the weather. If you'd known there was gonna be rain, you would have put your plants out. You would have opened up all the all the doors of the conservatory to get that fresh water in there. This is silly, but um, it's raining pretty heavily. And could you make me your evening rouse check, please? Yes. Success. Mm -hmm. Now, Imogen, 11 years with mom and the sisters. Something happened to you in those 11 years. Something unexpected. You woke up one night, all the memories that were taken from you by Lucius restored. How has that felt for Imogen these last few nights, dealing with that? I think Imogen has been going over everything she remembers 
multiple times a night trying to piece things together and seeing if she missed anything and slowly realizing certain things about herself and Tulio and Lucius and everybody. And where has that put Imogen's, let's, let's phrase it this way, how do you think Imogen's trajectory has changed or has it changed in her goals and ambitions moving forward into the nights? She didn't want to run the family like Hannah Laurie wants her to. Mm -hmm. She didn't want that responsibility. She didn't think she was capable of it. And she still doesn't want it, but she feels she needs it now. If only to keep Tulio from having it. All right. So as you are in your conservatory, and I'm sorry, you got a success on your Ross check, is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, as you're in your conservatory and um, starting to open up the windows, starting to get let some of the rain in and a little frustrated by it. I mean, these weather apps are usually pretty accurate to some degree, but this is no mention of rain at all. Your mother appears in the conservatory and she says, Oh, this certainly is some strange weather we're having, Schatzler. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. I'm just trying to let the rain in for the plants. You do know there's nothing natural about this rain, no? Can you not feel it? I suspect it as much. I don't know what it's from, though. How are you doing, my dear? You've been a little okay. distant these last few nights, and I, I know why. I just was waiting for you to talk to me about it. I remembered something. Yes, I know. The Dark Mother informed me. Of course. Why didn't you tell me? I'm afraid you're gonna have to be more specific. We'll kind of pause and say, well, any of it. Why didn't you, you know, why you helped me when I was a child, when perhaps no I understand your, your confusion your frustration perhaps I should say it this way when I met you again and you did not know who I was I knew something was wrong and I knew it might cause you more pain or confusion or sometimes things can go wrong when you try and force the memories back in unnaturally and I would rather have not that happen to you. So I took you as my own, brought you here, and let you be whoever you were now. And I knew eventually Lilith would guide you back home. Yes, perhaps the Dark Mother gave it my memories back when I needed it. She most certainly did. Well? And now I feel that they have returned. Lilith is going to guide your shiksal, your destiny. Yes. You just must trust her. No, her jaw will tighten a little bit at the word trust. And she'll nod. I sent Carla to Edgar's house to guard his ghoul. I do hope he takes it as a sign of good faith. It's already a sign that he trusts us. He has joined the Bahari, as your cousin Maria has as well. It's all good signs. All signs that the garden will grow, that Lilith is bringing things into fruition, as, you know, is our goal, ultimately, for everything. Right. Of course. Other goals, of course, but the main goal is that one. Are you sure they could be trusted in the garden? If they cannot be trusted, Lilith will consume them entirely. They will not survive the rituals. Right. Well, Lilith's will is mine. So, we'll see. I must charge you with something 
my daughter? Yes, mother. The vision Lilith showed me of Edgar's light, which is this woman. Don't know what it means. Edgar has something to do with it. So, when you meet again, whenever that will be, make sure to protect your cousin. So I know you protect all your cousins. But there's something happening here with the Shadow Bane. It's important. We should Inv find out. It involves you, it involves Edgar, it involves his ghoul, and perhaps all of your cousins are involved. I don't know. Well, he wanted it, so it must be very important. So that is what Lucius wanted. It's a shadow. Bane. Yes. It's a relic yes. of some kind. Do you know what it does? No. I, that I didn't remember. I don't think he ever told me. Maybe he didn't know. Shut up. It's too bad. Well, if anything, you and your cousins will figure it out. If that is Lilith's will. Of course. So anything I can I can do for you to set your mind at ease, to give you comfort. I wanted to comfort you so much, daughter, when you came back from Potsdam. Someone new, someone different, and I, I knew I could not. Nisa could ask Rick. So desperately wanted me to work my way into your mind and change things, and I, I refused. These past several years, the rituals, the garden, Lilith has been my greatest comfort. She smiles and comes over and kisses you on the forehead. It's at that moment, <clears throat> Jaeger, who is your mother's uh, ghoul and attendant, comes in. And he says, um, Entschuldigung, I don't mean to interrupt, but there's uh, people are here. Um, the Dunson and the Nagaraj are here. They're here for you, Imogen. Oh. Well, should we let them in, Mother? I believe you should go greet them outside. Um, we have us uh, setting up for the next ceremony since we have not had one in a decade. It's a little messy in here right now. Fair. And um, Imogen will kiss her mother on both cheeks and meet everyone outside. Take your weapons, Imogen. Yes, mother. Grab my brass knuckles and my dagger. Mm -hmm. And Edgar and Adelaide wait at the door and Imogen appears. Good evening. Hello, cousin. It's been some time, Adelaide. Eleven years? Yes. Yes. And Edgar, how are you? Oh, come here, sweetheart. And Edgar will just lean in and kiss her on both cheeks. The rain's um, getting really heavy as you stand out here. Uncomfortably so. Um, as, as he kisses one of Imogen's cheeks just in her ear, he'll just whisper, Ah, hi, Lila, too. She'll whisper it back, and it is. She'll tense a little bit. Right, so Adelaide, if you would like to inform Imogen of what we're doing this evening, that would be excellent. Before you do that, Tulia, where do you think you are in this scene? How far away park do you think you are from Imogen's home? Probably maybe a couple blocks at this point. Do you think you're within eyeline to see this happening? I would, at the very least, be in shadow perspectives, eyeline. So you'd be able to be listening to everything that's going on here? If I could, yes. It depends. Adelaide cool. and Edgar, do you still have Sense the Unseen active? Absolutely. Then, then as you're talking to Imogen, both of you are aware that someone is listening with shadow perspective. You don't know who, though. Edgar might have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar will just walk over to the shadow like feigning like he's trying to get out of the rain and he'll just kind of whisper under his breath I know you've been bored at home brother but this is 
This is something else. Come out and play, little brother. Do I see or hear this? Yes. There is nothing. He's not doing anything supernatural to conceal this. Yeah. You hear Edgar whispering, like, into into a, the darkest corner of the um, archway here. Looks very weird. <laughs> Major furrows her bra at that. And Tulia, Adelaide do you? Do you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Audibly. <laughs> and looking at the rain. Do you exit your car, Tulio? Do you listen to them or do you ignore them entirely? Uh, Tulio will... Withdraw the shadows, but not get out just yet. He's gonna take a pause. Mm -hmm. What was that? Oh, you know, sibling shenaniganry, I assume. Right. We should get out of the rain. And Edgar is like making a very pointed look directly into Imogen's eyeballs. Imogen is just like, okay, how about we get in the car? Fine by me. Alright. Adelaide, do you text to Lou? Since you know now that he is nearby, just don't, don't know exactly where. Yeah, yeah the, the phone is still in the car, so Adelaide is going to pull the phone out and be like, if I show up to the house and you're not there, I'm going to be angry. <laughs> you received that text? <laughs> I think, um... Yeah, he will subtly try to just merge with the traffic. And then once he's far enough down the street, fucking speed home. <laughs> Alright. So, next stop is Maria. So you'll travel that way. To Kreuzberg, then to the Mitte, then back to Schlottenburg, to the Havel River. So Maria, in sort of the same situation as Edgar was, you're in bed with Katrin, taking a moment, now that you have some alone time, and um, shared some physical intimacy with each other and just shared being in a space alone together for the first time in 11 years. And it's wonderful and beautiful. Two route strikes, please. <laughs> wonderful and beautiful. And then Huddy ruins it by asking for a lot of shit. Both failures. Yeah, so you're hungry. Um, <laughs> oh god, no, this is gonna be gross. I'm at three. Why would you be at three? You should only be at two. No, go, go. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be at three. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you fell one, both, you're right? at three congregate. Yep. Mm -hmm. I fell both. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> this beautiful moment um, now has become horrible as as the uh, intimacy ends. You are famished and, uh, you know, your gut hurts, your teeth hurt, and you look at Katrin and she looks like a feast. Not just for the, the census. Oh, oh boy. Uh, Catherine, uh, I, uh... Has, uh, has to hunger? You hungry? Little, little, little bit. She's going to look at her hands. Yeah. Because she knows it's... Uh, uh, hold on. Uh -huh. Hold on. Edgar gave me this. And she reaches over across the desk across the uh, side table and she pulls out a butterfly knife and she slices her wrist real, like in one fast motion yeah drink something she's gonna uh tenderly uh take the wrist and kind of kiss at her hand first and then mm -hmm. kiss up to the cut and uh sink in and drink yeah don't want to sink in she will um you, you know the painful I mean. bite oh right <laughs> right right right, right. Mm -hmm. forgot about that for a second that's why she cut herself yeah um, yes, how much, are you, how much are you taking? Uh, just two points. Take all of it if you want. Not dumb, buddy. There's nothing dumb about that. You're hungry. <laughs> just two. Mm -hmm. 
So two points, even for a mortal, is a significant amount. And so then Katwin feels a little lightheaded. She reaches over for a bottle of water and drinks it down pretty greedily and uh, reaches for some bandages and starts wrapping up her arm. Maria's going to help her uh, bandage herself up. And she's going to say thank you for that. I'm sorry, I forgot. My, I must have forgotten myself in the joy of uh, being back home I mean, here with you. How could I blame you, honestly? <laughs> so nice to just be alone again back home and and I just want things to go back to the ways as they used to be. That's all as I want. I would like that too. She's going to reach up and caress Catherine's cheek. As you do that, she puts her hand over yours and says and Maria, I know we talked about it already and I, I know you're going to ask me about it again and you know I don't I don't want I'm not... I'm not ready. You know, I would never f ask anything of you that you wouldn't want to do. But... I need to ask something of you that you don't want me to do. You can tell me anything. If and when I want this, I don't want it to be you. But I should tell you why, maybe. It is your choice and it's your decision to tell me. I'm not going to even... How long have we been together now? But it's important that you understand my feeling about it. I watched my dad embrace all three of my brothers. And every time he did it, he got colder. I saw how it hurt him. There's nothing in him anymore. There's no love. It hurts people when they do it. It hurts vampires when they do it. I know it does. I don't... My dad is a shell of the person that he was before all of this. And I don't want to see that happen to you, Maria. What did I do to deserve you? There's something really great, obviously. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, but... On top of that, I I don't care what Edgar says. I want to find out what's going on with the milliners. And I want you to give me permission to go home with Giancarlo Putinesca as my bodyguard or whatever. And I want to go undercover. I want to figure it out and help with what's going on. I want to help. And I think I'm the best person to do it. I am a milliner. It's then that Maria sits up on the bed, looking away from Catherine, and there's a pregnant pause before she says, Do you think you'll get hurt? Do you think there's a possibility? Emotionally, for sure. <laughs> Physically, maybe. But I'm willing to risk it. It's important. And in the same way that I don't want you to get hurt by making me into like you, I don't want to see Edgar get hurt killing his uncle. And if I can do something, I want to do it, try to do it first. A, you know, Edgar can be a dick, but he's family. I want to say yes. You know I trust you, and you know I love you. Then say yes. But that's also very dangerous. You know what almost happened. They tried to take... They, they were about to come take you away, forcefully. Yes, but now it's my decision to go. And I go with some sort of protection, with knowledge, and you'll know I'll be there. And you can tell Edgar and your coterie... And if something happens, then you can either rescue me or get revenge. Hopefully rescue, he says, as she turns back around to 
look towards Catherine again, uh, crawling over to her and placing both hands on her cheeks. She's going to press her forehead against Catherine's and she's going to say, as much as it pains me to say this, I trust you and you do have my permission. Do what you need to do, do what you feel is right. You've always had your freedom, even in this, you know that. Then I'll do it. Just promise me, promise me you'll be careful. Promise me I won't have to go and kill them all. So you just confirmed to Katrin that she can mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and go undercover the milliners, find out what's going on in Friedrichshain. And Correct. she pulls over uh, a shirt and pulls uh, her very tight black jeans on. And she says, I need to, I need to get some air. I need to, I need to think about how I'm going to do this. And also I really need a donor. Do what you need to do, my love. And she's going to stand up and like hug her from behind. She's and... going to just completely wrap herself around you and kiss you a lot and whisper to you as she does. So saying, you know, Thank you. Thank you for letting me do this. You know I trust you. And whatever you need at your disposal, whatever I can do. I'll, I'll let you know when I think of how I want to do this. I need to be, I actually have to think like something I hate doing. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And she and make hikes herself up on your um, uh, sort of Ikea shelves here and goes out the window to the street level just snakes herself out of there this is probably a usual site <laughs> yeah it's avoiding your mom because then the conversation she'll never get out of here um and as <laughs> as that happens the bell for esoteric rings which the shop is closed at the moment because no one's up there watching it would it be that fine 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 she says she's gonna just pull her pull a top on mm -hmm. uh and pull some jeans on uh and then uh, make her way downstairs. Uh, go up, check upstairs. the, uh, or upstairs. Yes, mm -hmm. make her way upstairs. Go check the, uh, the little, little, little peephole. You see, Adelaide, Edgar, and Imogen. She's just gonna big smile on her face, opening the door. What's the surprise for? Hello. Hello, darling. I need Good evening, you to put cousin. some shoes on. Oh, we going out? We going out? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Business or pleasure? Business. Oh. Is your is your bonnie last here? Ah, uh, no. You just missed her. She went out the window. Uh, if you could tell her to give me a call, uh, there's some things I'd like to talk about uh, concerning our concerning her father. We may have something to speak about then. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to say as she's slipping on her uh, boots. All right. Well, I'm going to go sit in the car. <laughs> Is there anything that you grab, Maria, okay. specific besides your own clothes? Uh, the ritual dagger that she always mm -hmm. has on her, usually. So all of you can pretty quickly head out to the car. And... Um, Surprisingly, Adelaide knows the city really, really well. Uh, Edgar, you think? Maybe she knows it even better than you. She's taking side streets that you would never think to take, and she's getting places really fast. Um, and Tulio, you don't know Berlin as well as you grew up in Potsdam. And uh, you only were in Berlin for a few years before you were confined to your adoptive mother's home. And so you're taking a longer way home. And uh, as you pull into your haven in the Mitte, Adelaide pulls in almost at the same time. Edgar, wait in the car. Hold my hand. And she'll make sure Ted is still in the car. I'm not touching that fucking thing. She's going to toss it in Edgar's lap. Be back soon. And get out of the car. And if Tulio doesn't immediately get out, go knock on the window. Tulio will definitely hesitate and just... 
force a breath out of his dead lungs and just the knock happens. Roll the window down. Was I speeding officer? Were you in town? Did I, I have to drive to. all the way out to your haven to come pick you up? Or could we have just met in town? Oh, you were there for me. Presumptuous of you to think that I would be at Imogen's home. I didn't say you were in Imogen's home. I see a lot of things. Is that where you were? Right where we were parked and you could have just gotten in the car at that point? A gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. It's good to know you're a gentleman, Tulio. Please get in the car. Look, I'm being so nice. You're doing wonderfully. It's taking effort. How's Ted? Excellent. Edgar's watching him right now. Probably crying. Edgar, Ted keeps, and... keeps crawling all around you. It won't stop. It crawls up your arm and around the back of your neck, down your shirt. As soon as it tries to go down the shirt, he'll just grab it and squeeze it. It doesn't bother it at all. You don't know much about homunculi, but you think maybe it doesn't have any um feelings anymore. He'll just hold it at arm's length until they get back in the car. You do you it's, want me to hold it, on to Ted? It strokes yes. your it strokes the your fingers very gently. I think you've made a new friend. Don't say that. Tulio, it's cute though. Tulio, do you get in the car? Yeah, I will walk around. Uh Edgar's passenger seat, correct? Yes. Uh I will walk to the passenger side just very quickly. Uh see if uh Edgar will roll the window down. Yeah, Edgar will roll the window down and hand to Ted to Tulio. Ted has the run of me, if he wishes. He, crawl he crawls into your hair and settles in. <clears throat> and I will kiss Edgar on both cheeks. It's good to see you, you handsome fuck. Return the favor. I am so sorry. I tried to convince Mother to let me come get you for, like, just a night or two to stay at my place. I what? missed you. I missed you. Roz, check to Leo. Shit. <laughs> Don't worry, at least he what wasn't failure. completely alone. Maria says from the back. That is a failure. Mm -hmm. So you're not too hungry. Squeezing in. Mm -hmm. Squeezing in, indeed. And now, Adelaide, finally, you can swing back around to where you started. And I should make a note. When you picked up Maria in Kreuzberg, and when you picked up Tulio here in the Mitte, there was no rain. So, Maria, when they came and picked you up, they were all wet. Interesting. It What's with the wet clothes? It was raining. And I, I believe she is getting rather impatient with us. Um, and Maria's in the back, right? Maria, Imogen, and Tulia are in the back. You and Edgar are in the front. In the back pocket, Maria, if you could grab the letter that's in there and just make sure everybody reads it on the way. Thank you. Ooh, of course. And <laughs> <laughs> uh maria will read it herself and then uh hand it on off like a like giving a pamphlet in school mm -hmm. and it is as i said it is on the letterhead of peacock island as you pass it around to everyone and i believe only tulio you have uh a merit with camarilla knowledge so you're a merit, well, I have with, a merit with status with status okay I'll allow that in the sense where you recognize clan symbols more so than your cousins. Uh, the letter that says that I invite you to my home, children of the Hikata, come free and without malice. I need your help is stamped with two different clan symbols, but both are of the same clan, Clan Samitsi. 
Flesh one, one symbol is a lot um, more um, archaic than the other one. Do we deal with this Amici now? Is that who that is? Those two symbols are there. Well, that's a little bit older. Well, a lot older. Does hmm. anyone examine the manila envelope this came in? Maria will. Yes. There's a spliff in there. Uh, and as that gets noted, um, we're only what? making deals so that our cousin here can get to see his friend. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of the loop. Um, cooped up for some time now. Maria can give you all the gruesome details. We got to hang Friend. out for six years. I guarantee you this is not entirely about my meeting with Yancy. This is just happenstance. We would have gotten cold regardless of my desire to meet with uh, the masked wonder, as it were. If you say so, Edgar. The masked so, wonder. As you drive further into Charlottenburg, I should note, the rain returns. Heavy, very heavy, and dangerous. Adelaide, let's drive again, please. Oh, there's the rain. It's intense. Indeed. Uh, yes. Were any of you from the United States? This would remind you, and from the East Coast of the United States, this would remind you of hurricane weather. Yeah, Adelaide, um, once the rain starts so again, <laughs> is going to drive much more carefully than when she got the pull well, we'll out. Find, well, we'll find out. We'll find out we'll how find carefully out. you're driving. Don't fuck me. <laughs> Tulio <laughs> pretends to be from the US. Can I make a roll to, like, <laughs> equate that? No. That's too. In the same way that if you that. pretended to be from Bulgaria and were then able to understand their culture, <laughs> <laughs> certainly not. Oh, oh I just Google successes. How many? Just Google. <laughs> Four successes. Four. Yes. However, you're driving well in the rain. Um, definitely not something that you're used to. Um, but Ooh. everyone, please, as you get closer to the river Havel, please make me wits and awareness rolls. Sweet. Well, if well. anyone has any dots in academics, please add those to your roll. Uh, I did have something that Maria wanted to say really quick to Edgar. So the name Yancey was dropped, and did you say Masked Wonder in character? Mm-hmm. Uh, is that the same guy that came to my shop all those years ago? Uh, I don't know he was wearing a mask. Any, everyone's successes, please. Real quick, um, would a specialty uh, in in death for awareness? In what for awareness? In death? No. Okay. And I'm going to assume that an academic specialty in macroeconomics is not going to help me here. No. Um, Just, okay, so... But if you have dots in academics, you may add them to it. Um, to be on the safe side, especially given the weather, uh, I'm going to use Oblivion Sight. Okay. Because you can see in the dark, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I have... Um, I, I see you. I see you. Six. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five. Five successes total. To total. Mm -hmm. um, I, got, I got a crit. Um, and one of them was on my blood dying. Increase your hunger by one, please. Okay. And what about you, Imogen? Two. Two? And what about you, Tulio? Four. Okay. So, Tulio, Edgar, and Maria. Sorry, not you, Imogen. Rough. Um, all of you notice as you get closer to the river, the clouds are really low. Like, really, really low. Um, and they're... <laughs> they're mostly centered around the island. It's like the clouds aren't coming, aren't nimbus clouds coming from the atmosphere. They're coming from the island and spreading upward as opposed to the other way around. Interesting. Am I not, is anybody else getting those weird clouds? 
Yeah. Blood magic is a mighty thing. Yeah, that's where the spotty rain. As you pull into the docks, Adelaide, mm -hmm. the temperature gauge on your car starts spinning fast to the left. Outside of your car, it's freezing. A severe uh, drop in temperature. Yeah. You watch it move. It's in Celsius, of course. And you watch it move all the way down to negative three Celsius, which all of you would know, or should know, that that is the temperature at which blood freezes. You would know, should you exit out of this car, if you don't activate the blush of life, you won't be able to move very long. If you'd like to inform your coterie of this, as you can look at, or Edgar also can see this happening. We need to make sure that we're being safe about this. Make sure your blood's moving. Understood. And, okay, so I have where the veil thins. Am I getting any sense of that here? No. Okay. You remember what uh, happened to Sigmund all those years ago? Mm -hmm. Probably be best to avoid that. So if everyone make a rouse check for me to activate Blush of Life, let me know if you are successful or failed. Oh so look, success. my very first success <laughs> on a rouse check. Yeah. Yay! Successful. Success. Adelaide? <laughs> Fail. Fail. Okay, so are you at three hunger now? Two. Two hunger. All right. How about you, Imogen? Uh, success. And you, Tulio? Success. All right. So no one's outrageously hungry. As you all exit out of the car, it's very difficult to see here. It's gray, cold, dark. You can see snow in the air. You can see the rain just behind you. You can see ice forming on the surface of the water of Hubble River over to the Peacock Island. And you're not entirely sure how it is that you're supposed to get here. There's dinghies that you could take, but there's ice forming in the water. I'm not familiar with winter sports, but can't you walk on ice if it's thick enough? Technically, I think. Maybe. You, usually there needs to be a bit of snow on top. But the dragon seems to enjoy walking on water. So... We'll see. I say we give it 10 minutes. If it doesn't start to snow and thicken up the ice, we take a boat as far as we can. And then once it's frozen up, we walk there silly. Do remember that we're at her haven and we were offered hospitality. Please. See, I'm getting better with manners. The note says, without malice, is there a risk of any of that? Do we have any, um, we're not going to offend her at all, are we? At that, Edgar will take the pistol out of his jacket and put it in the glove box. Imogen will also disarm. Okay. Maria will pull out her knife from uh, her from the inside of her uh, jacket and place it in the car. Interesting. Look at all of you. Love, I've missed all of you so much. I'm going to shoot you a look. It's not trust, brother. It's that if she decides to kill us, there's nothing we can do about it. As you say that, person appears on the water. Edgar, you've seen them before. They are very small in stature, short, maybe five feet tall, and very pale and frail looking. Can't see them close enough to make out any facial features, but they are wearing a, what looks like a white dress, but not really. It's hard to tell from here. They are just standing, it's very close to the island, but on the water. 
They see you. And everything stops. The snow, the rain, the clouds, the temperature. Everything stops. Except for a large block of ice. You see them stamp their foot on the water. It makes no splash. The large block of ice floats over to where you are. I believe our ride has arrived. Um... Maria is just going to look at the others before, like, poking at it with her foot. <laughs> it doesn't move when you poke it. She's going to take a chance and step onto it. So much people waiting. I'll step onto it as well. Feels as solid as stepping onto land. It does not move in the water. I'll step onto it. Uh, as Maria does, I would like to activate Sensi Unseen. Sure. You don't see anything. Oh, I was just waiting for everyone else. Go on then. Adelaide will step onto the ice, pulling Edgar with her. <laughs> and as the person, the figure in white, turns their back on you, starts walking back towards the island, the ice block goes with them, and you along with it. It is not fast. You don't have to hold on to each other or try and keep your balance. It is slow and steady and paced. If there's anything you'd like to discuss before you get there, now is the time to do it. Or do we stand in silence at this display? I think what a cold. It is not cold anymore. Oh. But this ice is here. Do I need to make a knowledge hungry roll? Oh, oh no. for sure. Oh. This is outside. You're calling this blood sorcery? Because that's your best guess. This is outside of anything that you've ever seen. It's magic. It is magic. Okay. Willpower, which I have so much of. Uh... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, so much. So much willpower. So much willpower. Three successes. You have to know what this is, Edgar. You can't leave the island without knowing at least what this is. As you approach, is, the, is there anything you'd like to discuss besides that? Tulio's going to take a moment. Oh, go on. You had something. No, go ahead. No, no, go for it. Tulio's just going to take a moment and turn to Imogen. Um, I think they... I wanted to apologize in our last, but our last meeting. What about? I came off as very forward, and that's not usually how I like to display things. But the fact of the matter is, and this is the last I'll say on it, I swear. There's not been a day that's gone by that I haven't thought of you during lockdown. I do hope you've thought of me. She'll like incline her head a little bit. You're forgiven. Just from outside of uh, Imogen's viewpoint, like behind Imogen, m looking towards Tulio, Maria's just going to be like, Wait. And I will turn my attention back to the task at hand. Well, as you, as the ice block reaches the island, Adelaide, Maria, Imogen, and Tulio. All of you feel suddenly this intense sensation of euphoria. The darkness that is inherent in your blood is singing out to you from the island. You feel strong here, powerful here. You feel like you could do your necromancy, you're raising things from the dead. 
Your Bihari rituals would be amazing here. Your shadow perspective would be outrageously powerful here. All of you feel it. Edgar, you feel it too in a much, much less sense than your cousins. Because you it is inherent in your blood, but you have not taken to using it. However, the sensation you feel is much different. You feel warmth on your back. It reminds you of when you used to go swimming in the lake and then would lay out in the sunlight to dry. Or like a warm hug from Aelin as you step foot on the island. Edgar will just take one last look back up seeing the balcony that he's watched this island from for so many years. I mean, it's been almost three decades that he's been watching this island from that balcony and he's never stepped foot on it. Mm -hmm. He'll just light a cigarette and hand it to Tulio and then light one for himself. As soon as you okay. light up that cigarette, the dragon appears before you. Put that out, please. Begging your pardon. No. The dragon has a very frail, thin body. Ghostly white. Large blue doe eyes. Thin hair. They're wearing a white dress. But not a dress. It's something you would wear under a dress. A shift is what they would call it. It looks authentic and very old. And were they human, they would have long died of hypothermia, based on the way that they are dressed. They size all of you up. You are the Hikata? Ah, uh, yes. A pleasure to meet you. I'm Maria, Maria Rossellini. Do the rest of you have names? You may call me Adelaide. Imogen. Dr. Tulio Giovanni. Edgar Wade. I am Dragon. Welcome to my home. I need your help. I have a problem with a ghost. Ghost, you say? Yes. I, my speciality. Ed, Edgar immediately thinking he could have stayed home for this. <laughs> With uh, Eyes of Oblivion looking around, do we see any ghosts on this island? Currently? No. I still have Sense the Unseen on, and I would act like to have bi the Anyone Binding who has Sense the Unseen activated, please make me a um, Wits and Auspex roll. If you do not get more than seven successes, I don't need to know. Eight. Messy crit. Oh. Then would our special guest like to join us really quickly? <laughs> you sneaky <laughs> motherfucker. You. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I'm going to smooch that mask. I'm coming for you. God, this was so long waiting. Hello. Sneaky <laughs> fuck. Oh, like, my mm, God. Can I watch? <laughs> <laughs> that was Josh. Josh was like, Josh was like, hey, yo, Zach, let me just say I'll watch. <laughs> I've just been vibing it. this whole time. Waiting. I knew it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the Special guest. Half. I should have called it. Yep, it's Zach. Would you like to introduce who you're playing for us tonight? Hey there, I'm Yep, it's Zach, or Zachary Vaudo, and I am playing Yancy, the most for out too. Amazing. So, Edgar, as the rest of your coterie stares at Dragon, who looks very distraught, by the way, their eyes are rimmed entirely in red. Edgar, you see someone standing not too far back from Dragon. A figure in a white mask. Hey, yo, Junga, you like my car? The laugh that Yancy gives out drops the unseen presence. Now all of you can see this figure. 
as he nearly spits the blood on the inside of his mask, and he goes, uh, it is a very nice talk. <laughs> well, sweet talk me a little bit stranger, and maybe I'll let you take it for a spin. <laughs> uh, welcome to Peacock Island, kids. Dragon immediately <laughs> turns around as Yancey reappears and walks over to them and just lays their head on their shoulder, on their arm. On their arm. Uh, Yancey is about six foot mm-hmm. seven, yeah. so it's a... Uh, Dragon's very small. It's feet. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one that came to my shop. I missed you. A pleasure to finally meet you. Good to meet you as well. I love the theatrics yeah. of the card. Ah, thank you. It... It's part of the whole stage presence bit. I've been hearing so much about all of you for such a long time. So obviously, when a dragon here had a bit of a ghost problem, who better to call? Well, you've got some of the best necromancers in the business. How may we avail ourselves to your service? Dragon turns to all of you and says, There's a ghost that is taking over the bodies of my peacocks, burning them up, and they are dying. Please, can you make it stop? I do not want to bury it anymore. Have you seen this ghost, Dragon? Or... I have no... Ability to see. No. Not exactly our speciality. But Yancy there... told me it's a ghost. I've become familiar with the concept going back and forth between here and America. Uh, you run into enough of that shit. You get the hang you get the hang of it, but it's not exactly something I can encounter, not exactly something I can tackle. Well, I'm here now. And I like to th- think of myself as more as a mistress of ghosts, so to speak. So I'll do what I can. Much obliged. Dragon walks over to you, Maria. Takes mm-hmm. your hand. Maria will allow her hand to be taken. Uh, show me where it's been happening. Please, you are all welcome in my home. I offer you hospitality please don't eat my peacock so if you are hungry I'll give you food and graciously accept thank you for your hospitality dragon leads you Maria of course the rest of you can follow mm-hmm. deeper into the island it's very dark here there's no lights here there's no electricity here or running water except for the water that's all around you and you see you pass by little stones on the ground it looks like with fresh graves, it looks like dragon has buried what peacocks have not made it. And you see and hear peacocks all around you as you go deeper in uh, squawking and you see them peeking out at you from the woods. Some of them come out a little bit more boldly to walk next to dragon, sort of rub up against them. So adorable. And eventually you hear someone screaming but it's not someone, it's a peacock. It's screaming, running around in circles. Its eyes are bloodshot red, its feathers are falling out, and you think it's trying to say words. Oh, God damn it, not again. Please, can you make this stop? Looking oh. at the peacock, Is there any signs of something going on that we would be familiar with? Yes. Those of you who have sensed the unseen or oblivion sight, you can see this peacock is possessed by a specter. Oh, that's not nice. What is it? We we can make out what the specter looks like. Is it look? Is it like holding on to it? Etherically. I would say Adelaide and Tulio with Oblivion Sight would be able to see the specter the most clearly. It's 
black ghost, completely black, fire red eyes. It is, there's nothing human left in it. It is a being of pure, an essence of pure rage. That's not just a ghost, I'm afraid. That is a, that is a true monster. It has given in entirely. Not good. Not good indeed. Um. And then as you look at it and discuss this, the peacock stops screaming, falls to the ground. It doesn't move further. And all of you see the specter, whatever was possessing it, float up like mist. Start heading further into the island. Dragon leaves from you, Maria, and walks over to the peacock. Gets on the ground and picks it up. Starts speaking to it in a language you don't understand. Do I follow With, the the specter? Yes, you may. I would say Adelaide and Tulia would be the best handled to handle this. Mm -hmm. And Maria, obviously, as well following them with my with my fun little thing that happens i'm so sorry to leo <laughs> so yeah we follow maria will follow yeah so let's take this in separate scenes then as the three of you head off with the specter and dragon stays behind with the peacock yancy and edgar and imogen not much you can do here this isn't really your specialty but edgar right. you've been waiting to speak to yancy forever and Imogen your mother informed instructed you to protect Edgar for reasons you don't know right we've got about 10 to 30 minutes before that happens again with my latent pool storyteller do I need to roll to figure out the intense emotion that this dragon has with the peacock no or is it readily obvious it is extremely obvious um if you'd like to roll me a wits and insight roll uh truths will not apply here you can imogen can do this as well five successes mm -hmm. what about you imogen just one okay so no imogen this is really you're really out of place here and you don't have your weapons and you're supposed to protect edgar and you're not really sure what you're supposed to protect him from or how uh so you're just sort of keeping an eye out for everything all around you um edgar you get the impression that Something is wrong with Dragon, but not in a necessarily a negative way. You think Dragon might be broken. Not the kindred they were once. Whoever they are now is someone broken. As much as Edgar Marie, he really just wants to take a moment to speak with the Ancy. Um... Edgar will take off his suit jacket and he'll fold it and hand it over to Imogen. Would you mind holding on to this for me, Dylan? Sure thing. Edgar will walk over to the dragon. You care for them. I've never had much luck with animals myself. Dragon turns to you, looks very strangely at you, and Yancy, you can clock this. You know Dragon does this sometimes. And their eyes glaze over and looks at you, Edgar, and says, Is that you, Simon? I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. Vikos would do that. I'm so sorry, Simon. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I forgive you. Then, Perhaps we should set to burying your child. And then she blinks. I'm I'm sorry, what was your name again? Edgar. Yes, Edgar. Okay. Yancy, I need to bury the peacock now. Um of course. Once this business is done, I have no skill in necromancy, but I can help you protect this place from this happening again. No. You can't. No. 
Yancy, I need to bury the peacock now. I'm I'm sorry. No, it's it's all right. Um, would you allow me to help you? Okay. Yes. They hand you the peacock. Grow feral claws. Begin digging in the dirt. Edgar, just kind of under his breath in Iranian Farsi, will just kind of be whispering the death rites that he's learned from Aelin. Just kind of look over to Imogen. Then to Yancey. You're a hard man to get hold of. Really? I'm all over the city. Truth be told, uh, I've exhausted a decent amount of resources looking for you. It's honestly a bit embarrassing. Uh, Have you tried looking for the guy on the street corner doing magic? Never I would can... have occurred to me. I mean, I'm like, I'm nearly seven fucking foot here. I'm in like plus hammer plots, Alexander plots. I'm all over the fucking place, man. Fair enough. Maybe I should get out a bit more. Uh, Yancy, if I may be so bold, I have a very pregnant question for you. If you would answer me honestly. Storyteller, are they finished burying the peacock? They have. Then I'll, I'll wave him away from dragon. Done. Right. Um... Why does Violet Fisher want a favor from you so bad? Because everybody does. Right. So that's the start of my searching for you, as I was trying to get a favor from you to give to Violet Fisher, but I don't really feel that's necessary anymore and now it's just sort of become this thing that I do well if it makes you feel any better nobody gets favors from me because I don't do them I don't do the boon shit I hate that I've always hated that I trade in immediate favors. I trade in money. I don't like boons. Wonderful. I <laughs> I'll deal with Violet when she, if she ever grows the balls to come back to the city. Uh, I I'm 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 at, I'm at a loss now. <laughs> You know, things build up over decades and then you get there and it just sort of dies, you know. Is that all the, is the whole reason you're looking for me? Just to figure out if you could get something out of me? I'm not sure. I don't, in in truth, I don't know you well enough to know what there, what else there could be. That's a fair point. Mostly on account of me keeping it that way. But, I'm Yancy, I am of Clan Nosferatu, I am six foot seven, people always seem to fucking comment on it, and I do street magic. Well, Yancy, uh, I am Edgar Waite, I am a banker of Dunsarn, I make money. Two sides of a great equation. The people that make the money and the people that take it. Yes, indeed. If you ever need anything, and Edgar will just kind of gesture across the river. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to act like you don't already know where I live. 
<laughs> I appreciate that, Edgar. If you ever need anything, uh, please just drop by. More importantly, the thing I really appreciate is that, and I point back towards Dragon and the Peacock Burial. You didn't have to fucking do that. I know what it's like to lose someone you love. I can and tell. In truth, I've I've seen the two of you here before. I don't know what the bond you share is. But it commands my respect. There's some days I don't quite know the answer to that either. The point I'm getting at, though, is that you got brought here to do a job. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to be kind or respectful. To that degree, you could have stood by silently, kept to yourself, politeness. So, you may have been trying to find me in the stupidest way possible, I might add, for over a decade. And you come here and I don't have the thing that you're looking for. But, if it's any consolation to you, that is absolutely earned my respect too. I think we can talk plenty in the future, Edgar. I would like that. Uh, as it stands, I think in the very nearness of time, I will not be able to rely on the people I once did. Your bankers? Something's coming, Yancy. And what sound? As much as we've all enjoyed this uh, united clan of death, I'm not sure it will endure. It probably won't. Not while there are uh, significant people with significant aspirations within it. It's always the ambitious ones you have to worry about. <laughs> People that can't just keep to their fucking selves. Like the kind of person who looks for somebody for 11 years in the dumbest way possible. I mean, hey. There's different kinds of ambition. <laughs> That's true. No, no, the kind of ambition I'm talking about is the kind that will tear a clan apart. Much less a set. Much less a city. Much less the rest of it. And if you all are, uh, Clan Hikata, I think you already got a pretty decent idea of people that could fit that bill. I... You know, about 11 years ago, in this place in the Shadowlands, it was covered. It was, the shadows here were so deep. It was mortifying. I worried for a while and then it just went away. And I don't know why I'm telling you any of this other than perhaps you know someone who knows more about it than I do. To the best of my knowledge, it's not so much that it went away as it is it went dormant. Things like these never really go away. There's a couple people that are probably a bit more hands-on about this than I am, but 
Whether or not you want to talk to them, that's an entirely different story. I, I was willing to take a sit down with Alexander Nagaraja. There is no one I won't talk to. Even the Witch of Gudam? You know, I've been meaning to introduce myself. You know her? Doesn't always go well. But yeah, I know her. It would be worth something to me to broker an introduction. Edgar, because of your politeness to somebody, one of the rare few, one of the ones I can count on one hand, people that I actually seem to give a shit about, I'm going to give you the heads up that the last person I gave an introduction to, the witch, spent about half a year as a gopher and a plaything for them. They got what they wanted out of it, but at a cost. Then it seems I'll be needing to balance my ledger. I can't tell you what to do with your life, your own life, or anything in between. I can just give you the facts. If you would be kind enough to set that meat for me, I would just ask that you tell her that I have the Salubri's book. Out of character, what has Imogen been doing this entire conversation? Have you been staring a hole in me or? Imogen has been just making sure, well, I imagine y'all are off to the side. So she's just there holding the coat, kind of making sure everything's good. But uh, I would have heightened senses activated and be listening. Sure. So that's a perfect time for us to move to the other scene. With heightened senses, you would definitely hear a lot of uh, rustling, running, um, hurried movements and voices coming from your cousins. You would also hear with heightened senses the sobbing of dragon over the grave of the recently dead peacock. And you would have heard that entire conversation in its entirety. Heightened senses opens oh. up all of your senses. Yay. Um, <laughs> knowing that dragon was actually sobbing i would actually go over to her and just be like and try to provide comfort best to my ability if she'd allow me they wouldn't stop you no but they would spend their time crying and if you do get too close to them i'm gonna need a rouse check okay for blood tears oh yeah okay oh, I failed. right 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 you failed i did and that puts you at what hunger Dragon's blood smells different than any blood you've ever smelled. It's old, powerful, you know it immediately. Delicious. As you stand there with Dragon offering comfort, just being there, not really sure if Dragon's paying attention to you, the other three members of the Coterie are on the hunt for a specter running or floating, let's call it, through Peacock Island. This place is hard. Uh, luckily, two of you have the ability to see in the dark. Maria does not. So, Maria, you're relying on your cousins to make sure that you're going in the right direction. If either of you take her hand, it might be helpful to make sure that she does not stumble in the dark. Uh, Maria will probably be like, uh, yeah, can somebody help me? Don't I can see. Me. Oh. Don't, don't touch me. Okay, okay. Uh, Tulio? I'm glad you. So I take it as uh, red Adelaide you're wearing yeah. the item. Okay. <clears throat> and as you head through the, the woods, eventually you come across the specter. Hasn't found a peacock to inhabit. Instead, it has embodied itself in its entirety. And it stands there as what well, looks like a woman with red eyes, completely covered in shadow stares down at all of you 
do I do, is there anything familiar about this? Yes, spirit? there is. As soon as you see her in body, you recognize her. This was a specter you put into a pendant. The pendant that Katrin sold Yancy. Well, well, well. What are you doing running riot on the island? Now, the difference is, Maria, is she looks much more powerful here than she ever did in your shop. Huh. And she says, I'm taking back what's mine. And she rushes <laughs> at you. And let's see who she rushes at. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. You know what, Huddy? I had my suspicions when, you know, I asked, I was like, hey, what thing should I remember for this session? Oh, You're Tulio. Like, hey. <laughs> oh, Tulio. I feel bad because right now Adelaide's got the Nagaraja sheet. Can the Spectre see me? <laughs> the Spectre can see you because they are not okay. a regular race. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, Tulio. A stamina? Hello. And strength roll, please. This is... This is, uh... Not... Great. Oh, goodness. Do I have the opportunity to, uh, blood search? Yes. I rolled a critical success. Do not get hungrier. Make it count, Tulio. Make it count. We need to willpower we... reroll if possible. Yes, it is. It's two successes. Not enough. So as you watch the specter sort of sputter and come right in front of Tulio. It enters Tulio's body, and Tulio attempts to fight it off. It's painful. Tulio, please take two points of aggravated damage. And now you are possessed by the specter of Natasha. Your mission now mm -hmm. is to destroy anyone who's trying to get you off this island, Mr. Giovanni. Or should I say Natasha? Understood. All Adelaide and Maria, you see this happen. And Tulio's eyes go from completely black to completely red. That's that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Tulio, that's you really may take your good. action now. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to... Okay. All right. I'm going to look at Maria. Mm-hmm. I need to pull this up real quick. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. I will allow Imogen to have heard this happen. You would have heard Tulio yelp. You would have heard someone scream, I'm taking back what's mine. You know something bad is happening if you'd like to inform Edgar or if you'd like to go off yourself. Um, Edgar, I think something's happening. I'm going to I'm gonna go make sure they're okay. I'm going to use... And I'm going to go? Mm -hmm. Edgar, are you going to go? Yes. All right. So both of you race off. Neither of you have Oblivion's sight. So it's going to take you a couple of minutes to get there. Yes, Tulio, what would you Just, just uh, snap my mask like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, meet Maria's eyes and use Compel. Mm -hmm. Intelligence and Resolve, Maria. Uh, one second. Uh, I also have Unswayable Mind. Intelligence Resolve, uh, the... add your dots and fortitude to your roll. Sweet. Adelaide, what action are you taking? You can see that Tulio is possessed. Would there be a way to help with getting Tulio unpossessed or something that we could do with the spirit? Because Adelaide mostly deals with making zombies. Yes. Um... Well, the difference is Five successes. The difference is, is that a peacock can get burned up and die. A little harder to kill Tulio. Yeah. We just need to figure out how to give Maria time 
Maria has to find the fetter. But Maria knows yeah. what the fetter is. Five successes. Tulio, how many did you roll? I haven't rolled yet because I need I, I got a curiosity. Um would I be able to blood surge in this moment? Yes. Or is that you are yes, you are Natasha, anything? but you are embodying a vampire. Or you're skin riding a vampire, rather. Well, he gets hungrier. Mm -hmm. Could Adel could Adelaide step in front of Maria? Yes. But you don't necessarily know what he's doing. No. No, no. It's just because he said if someone touches me, not if I touch someone, right? That is correct. It works one way, not two ways. Maria is probably incessantly whispering, I need the fetter, I need the fetter, we need the fetter. What is it? Uh, lock it. Uh, has it swan? Uh, Yancey should have it. That is four with a messy critical. Four with a messy critical. Well, you're going to fall under your clan compulsion, Mr. Giovanni, Natasha. Uh, until you see something come to life, until you see something die, you're going to be at a two dice penalty. And with those, with that, you didn't get a critical, did you, Maria? Uh, no. Okay. I am going to allow this compulsion to work. What would you like to tell Maria to do? Stay. Stay where you are. And Maria, you feel like you cannot move. Uh, Adelaide, you probably see Maria initially attempt to move, but the moment that command hits mm -hmm. her, she just... Edgar freezes. and Imogen, you have arrived, and you see your cousin Tulio with red eyes commanding Maria not to move, while Adelaide sort of looks between the two of them trying to figure out what it is that she can do. Um, I, I will say as Edgar was running off, um, he would have just turned, like looked over his shoulder back towards Yancey and would have been, sorry, uh, f familial issues. <laughs> <laughs> Yancey, if you'd like to go with them, you certainly can. I am going to slowly, well, I'm not running. No, you can't like, see in the dark. The, you can't I, don't, see in the I don't know what the fuck this is. So I'm yeah. just... I, I'm walking. At some point, I'll hear what's going on and contribute, but I'm mm -hmm. just like, what the shit? <laughs> so, Adelaide, what are you doing? So, now that Edgar and Imogen are here... Mm -hmm. They've just arrived. And Maria said Yancey. I, yeah, I said Maria's, Yancey. Maria got Yancey. Yeah, Maria, you can still talk. You just, can't, you just can't move. Yancey, Yancey, Yancey. Has the fetter. Adelaide's gonna book it to Yancey. Do you have to stop Adelaide? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm possessed. Um, <laughs> Do it. It's the best uh, excuse. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything other than just my my body, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to just put her in a hold, I guess. Whatever. Sure. And here's what's going to happen when you do that. Doesn't matter what you're gonna roll. How many? Uh, let me. How, how, what's your health track? How many? How many doesn't health you have? Oh, let's find out. That's too aggravated already. Let's see. Um. Oh, nice. Uh, that's three points of um. Just untouched okay. currently. So what's going to happen is you put your arms around Adelaide as she begins running. Edgar, Maria, and Imogen, you see that um, the possessed Tulio touches Adelaide, and suddenly you smell their flesh burning. Mm. Not Adelaide, just Tulio. And Tulio, you're going to take another point of aggravated damage as you feel forced to let her go, and the specter is going to leave your body. It's going to come Sweet. out through your eyes. It's painful. It doesn't feel right. And it evaporates up into the air and continues further into the island. Am I still compelled? <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing for him to attack it. Yeah. Apologies, I forgot to factor in fortitude. I would have uh, five on untouched. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, <laughs> we're, it's different now. Yeah. But yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You can certainly let Maria go of that compulsion if you like. I would absolutely love to, yeah. Uh, the second the compulsion is uh, let go, Maria like shuts a little bit, uh, looks worried at Tulio and sees the specter evaporate, and then she's just going to book it towards, or so attempt to book it. <laughs> well, you don't have to book it too far, because Yancey is just sort of sauntering in here. The, the fetter, you have the fetter. That's the spirit that you bought from me. Why the What's fuck it? did you sell me a spirit that kills peacocks? I didn't... First off, first off, you bought it from my store, not me directly. We don't have fucking time for this. Yes, yes right. You're right, stopped. you're right, you're right. <laughs> so wait, do I have right. the fetter on me, or is it on dragon? It's on dragon. Let's go, ah, uh, and, and then, literally, you see this tall man just crouch and leap backwards. I'm going to soaring leap just mm -hmm. out of the scene. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can make it entirely to where Dragon is still still sobbing in front of the in front of the grave. Yep, I'm just gonna land next to her. Let's go. Land next to them. Let's go. Hey, um, do you remember that gift that I brought you—the little necklace? Yes, of course. I just gonna borrow that for a second. Of course. She takes Thank it you. off, hands it to you. I just tap her on the, like on the on the side of the head. Thanks so much, and boom, I'm gone again. <laughs> I'll just land back into the middle of the group with this mm -hmm. pendant dangling from my fingers. Like, all right, now what? Uh, perfect. I need that right now. And she's going to, like, Wait. perfect. She's going to take it, and she's just going to, um, a knife. Does anybody have a knife? Or something? I hand, I hand a hunting knife that's about the length of my forearm to the... Cool. You see Maria place the place the pendant on the ground, slice the palm of her hand open, and drip her vitae onto that. I'm going to attempt to compel uh, the wraith. You attempt to bind it or compel it? Uh, co uh, compel. Okay. You can try. I need a rouse check. You get a 1 or a 10, let me know. Because you're going to get a stain in your humanity. I need a significant amount of senses. This is, a, this is a specter. And as you do that, the weirdest thing starts happening. Success. All these peacocks all around you start coming out of the woods. And they all have red eyes. Oh, what is that thing? Do I have any idea about what's going on with this? You certainly do. The specter's controlling them. Oh. So, make me that roll to try and compel the spirit. Okay, and I that? need everyone else, including Yancey, to make me either dex athletics rolls, or if you have celerity, to do uh, something to get away from these peacocks. Um, or you can start beating on the peacocks. Whichever one you think oh, would make check. Dragon the least upset. <laughs> We, we could always bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the same as they were. <laughs> um, uh, I, um, I'm, at hunger. I'm at hunger too. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm at hunger too, and I'm just I'm just using weaving. Certainly. So don't just need to worry evasion. about it. Mm -hmm. What's the role for this? It's oblivion Resol ceremony. Resolve, and resolve, an, resolve an oblivion. Okay. Yeah. Edgar. Dex Athletics, Adelaide, Dex Athletics, Imogen, Dex Athletics, Tulio, Death Athletics, Dex Athletics, unless there's anything else you'd like to do. Three. Mm -hmm. um, Two. Oh, I, need, I, need to, I need to look at a thing. Do I add resilience to this or no? Resilience is passive. Okay. It should be added to your health track already. Okay, gotcha. Never mind. Uh, it's a three. Three? Mm -hmm. Try to pull up to see if maybe I can calm down the peacocks. That's one success. <laughs> You're trying to calm down the peacocks? Yeah, because can um can I make them calm with pan the aspects of you the power with pan with the panacea? Certainly yeah. could if they were just peacocks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I need to take a picture of this. They are not just peacocks though. Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. Eight successes. So, Imogen, Tulio, who who rolled less than three successes? 
Tulio and Adelaide. Okay. So Imogen and Edgar, you are able to dodge out of the way of these peacocks as they're squawking at you and flying up into the air to attack you, to peck at you. Uh, Adelaide and Tulio, not so lucky. One superficial damage each for both of you. Okay. And Maria, you pour your blood onto this fetter and take the time to perform your ritual. And as the peacock pecks at Adelaide's nose and bites into the Achilles tendon of Tulio, they all stop. Fall down, fall over, and then stand back up again and start squawking like regular peacocks. The spirit is once again embodied behind you. And it whispers in your ear, what? What are you doing? Why are you attacking these peacocks? I'm free. Out of the pendant. Do you not feel it? Do you not feel it? This island? I'm so powerful here. I do. I will make everything dead. Everything dead. That's all I needed to know. Passion feast. Mm Mm-hmm. To roll the Wraith's willpower, you need to roll me, um, I believe it's resolve, and a, a resolve roll, I believe. Uh, Just did it last night, feast. I should remember. I believe it's resolve. Uh, passion feast is you know, resolve and oblivion. Resolve I'm and right. Oblivion. God, yep. just, just admit when you're right. You got there at the same time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The Wraith has a lot of willpower. Um, while this is happening. But rolled like ass. Seven successes. Five successes. All right. So you're able to do inflict two points of aggravated damage onto the Wraith, but it's not down. It's not done. Mm-hmm. And it's going to attempt to possess you, Maria. <clears throat> Strength and stamina roll. Uh, can I blood buff this? Yes. Didn't roll as good as with Tulio. Strength and st- you said strength and stamina. Yes, this is a homebrew thing for embody or uh, skin writing rather. Keep getting those things mixed up. Six successes. I had uh, a crit one uh, on the, with the blood die, including the blood die. Okay, so you're gonna increase your hunger one more time. Oh boy, here and we go you're again. You're at starving decay. Three hunger. <laughs> but you are going to consume some of this wraith, so now you can go back mm-hmm. down to one, even though you increased your hunger, you can go back down to one. Perfect. And it's not going to be able to attack you. It can't embody you or can't skin ride you. It tries and it fails. You haven't learned since the first time I bound you. And she's going to. Uh, can she try. Uh, Take another bite at her. Take another passion yeah. feast bite, or would you like to try and bind her to the to the pendant? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but we need a sacrifice for binding. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of peacocks. <laughs> Avery's face of death. <laughs> You're muted, Avery. While all of this has been occurring, um. Can Edgar have begun to, with the circle facing inwards, in a circle around Maria, do ward against spirits? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, just reaching into the in, make me his that ritual roll, so I know if this wraith is going to be obliterated. Wonderful. All right. I mean, hey, if it works, it was very distracted trying to possess Maria. If you roll a high enough ritual roll, and by that I mean four successes or more, the wraith will be obliterated. The dragons seem really nice and seem really upset about peacocks dying. <laughs> Maria doesn't want to sacrifice. This is how you expected the dragon it. to be, right? The scary one that that uh, can walk on water. <clears throat> you expect the dragon to be like this, right? She's very nice. I, Innocent? you know, how many? Did yeah. You roll? Six successes. Mm-hmm. So, Maria, as you, uh, as the wraith, you you feed from the wraith, and it hurts them, but they attempt to possess your body, uh, and you are able to repel it. Again, you're all more powerful here with your oblivion. 
<laughs> and Edgar, as you perform your ritual of ward against spirits around the wraith, every time you get close to the wraith, your back gets warmer and warmer. And I need you to make me an intelligence and a cult roll. Before you finish your ritual. Three successes. You think that if this wraith tried to possess you, it would be obliterated. So you finish your ritual. And it disperses. Explodes in a cloud in a mist of oblivion void blackness. I was going to eat that. That That is one rouse check's worth of blood. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I will go up on hunger. You got three hunger now? Yep. Of course, you hear the voice of your mother in your ear. You see what the girl can do. You got to go home. Drain her dry. Take her power. You know you can. She has done more for me than you ever fucking did. Yancy, you see that the ghost has dissipated. Everything is as it should be. Jesus Christ. She said something about this island made her stronger. And correct me if I'm wrong, I felt that too. You all still feel it, minus Edgar. Edgar, you feel like you have a protective light on your back. There's nothing left in the pendant, right? It's just a pendant now covered in blood. It is, yeah. Uh, she's going to pick up the pendant. Spirit's gone. Here. It's yours now. Again. Thanks. Uh. That pendant, was that one of the ones Adelaide gave? Where did Adelaide get it? Where did Adelaide get it? From a dead body? Mm -hmm. It's been years. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Based on what this, what the wraith said, and what I'm, I assume more than just me are feeling, uh, that's the island. Something about this island uh, made the spirit stronger and oh. caused it to go a little wild there, against any of the bindings that I would have done. This place sits on a circus. Things. Things are gonna, things like that are gonna go a little bit more intense here. Which, you know, on one hand it could be great for certain abilities, as you may have seen on your way over here. And in other cases it's not. Yeah, when you bring an angry spirit here. Or when somebody sells it to me. Do you know where the furcus is? You're standing on it. The whole island is sitting on a furcus. That explains so much. We should probably inform Dragon that her peacocks are, are their peacocks are safe. Dragon, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Dragon has made their way into where you all are. Looks at all of you and eyes of thankfulness but doesn't voice it but instead walks over to Yancy and will whisper in Yancy's ear and Imogen you'll be able to hear this with your heightened senses and says did you bring the pendant to to bring them here it's not, okay. not a funny prank Yancy it's not exactly a prank I like your card tricks better I do too And I'll clip the pendant back onto her neck, back onto their neck, and just twist it. Mm. It's a lot safer now. You should tell them, Yancy. If you brought them here, you should just tell them. Yancy would never vocalize it, but there is a look of, are you fucking kidding me, in his eyes at Dragon right now. You should tell them about the singer. Remember? Like in the Inquisition. Oh. 
And then Dragon just sort of wanders off into the woods. Storyteller, am I as a player interpreting sorry, am I as am I as a player interpreting the request from Dragon correctly? In that they want yes, me to tell but, everything? Yes, but it's up to you to decide whether you should or not. Dragon, as you know, does not know who they are, their name, their yes. memories. They are uh, a kindred that you've been able to glean long enough were severely damaged by their time in the Sabbat. And yes. it's hard to, always hard to determine whether they are speaking to you in the present time or speaking to someone in the past. And yeah. I'll, I'll allow you to decide what you would like to tell the Coterie or not. This island existing on the nexus point that it does is a dangerous thing. Obviously, probably feels great for you guys, the intensity and the power, but you can also see how harnessing it can go very haywire, very fast. And that's why we're here. Or rather, that's why Dragon's here. I'm here for Dragon. Dragon is here. A, because it's their home, but once they found out about the the power that they were standing on, they stayed. Now, don't know much about it, except for some very vague statement from a very flighty witch about a child of light or being of light that can obliterate the whole thing. A singer of light. These uh, visions get a little wonky and not clear. But if we can find whatever the hell it was that they were talking about, we can maybe make this place a little safer for everybody. Edgar, I'm going to need you to make a manipulation and subterfuge roll, or a composure and subterfuge roll, rather, if you're going to try and hide a reaction to this. Uh, I'll seed the roll. Edgar's face drops. And yeah. that sort of easy, flowing charisma is completely gone to the wayside. What's on your mind, Edgar? <sighs> Fixing this place could come at a great cost. Where's the well? Sorry, what was that? I said, of course it will. Tulio, Edgar, and Imogen. You have heard of, all of you have heard of the Shadow Bane. You don't know if this is the same thing, but it might be worth asking. Do you know anything about something called the Shadow Bane? I do. Lucius Giovanni came to the city to get his hands on it. About uh, 20 years ago. Was he successful? Well, on account of we're all still here, I'm going to say no. Uh, that, that something's coming that you were talking about, Edgar. That's undoubtedly the end point. If he does. Do you know what this is? This? The Shadow Bane. Would it be the same thing as the Child of Light, the Singer of Light? I don't think... I don't know if they're the same thing, but I do know that whether or not they're the same thing, Lucius Giovanni would benefit from getting his hands on either or both. Do you know what we're looking for? Why don't you tell me? Asking you, I need a description. 
I have already given you the entirety of the description that I have. I was given this description from the most obtuse of visions that I've ever heard. Dragon returns at this point and says, Tell them, Yancy. Tell them about the Shadowlands. And they just sort of circle around back into another dark portion of the woods. Twenty years ago, I went into the Shadowlands with Lucius Giovanni and the Witch of Kadoom. And he was very thrilled to be there. Giovanni was. To him, that's his idea of heaven. That's his uh, vision of the future. Which, I know that you're all part of the Clan of Death, but I'm going to hope and venture that that's not your preferred outcome for the foreseeable future. Probably a lot more fun to play with death when there's life around you. Everything requires balance, Yancy. Some people don't think so. You said it was 20 years ago. Do you know of anyone else who is looking for the Shadow Bane? There's a high chance that the Witch of Kadum is also interested in finding it, whether it's for Giovanni or for her own ends, I could not tell you. Would it, be, would it benefit us to approach her herself, the witch? As I told Edgar here, that's a uh, go-at-your-own-risk sort of thing, because the last person that I brought to her, Lucius Giovanni, spent six years as her little playthrough, trying to get more information about the Shadowbane, and what he got, as far as I'm aware, is everything that I've managed to tell you. I do know that so long as he is intent on opening the divide, this place is not safe. The rest of the city isn't either. You've gotten a measure of the man. Ambition. That could be said about a lot of kindred. Not about, not with the amount of disdain that I have for it, though. How, how much power does he wield? I'm afraid I don't know the full extent of that, but I'd say somebody that can do the th- Many of the things that I've seen you all do in the past five minutes, as well as give me a cab ride to and from the Deadlands, man's got power. According to him, he was the only reason that we came back from there in the first place. He could just shut the door, and that's that. Excuse me for a moment. And Edgar will head off in the same direction that uh, the dragon went. Does anyone follow Edgar? No. The scene you come across is dragon surrounded by peacocks. They are laying flat on the ground and the peacocks are just laying with them, cooing gently at, at them. I can help you. Uh, 
everything, Yancy said. I know the singer of light. Dragon stands up from the ground. I knew a singer of light once. I killed him. I'm sorry. And then their eyes glaze back over. I'm sorry, I don't know how to help you. I don't know if I have the strength to help you. You helped bury my peacock. That means a lot to me. I'm sorry, I don't talk to people often. I... Yancy, it don't have to talk to Yancy. Just the fish stay in Einander. The singer of light. Sie ist mein Leben. Sie ist mein Herz. If you would ask it of me to bring her here, I would do that for you. I would not ask it. It is not mine to destroy. She... It is mine to protect. She feels called to this place. Blut nach Blut. Ora. I don't. Ah. She wants to be here. So I will bring her here. If you will help me keep her alive. Yancy, I, I, I need Yancy. <laughs> I, uh, I'll fetch him for you. Edgar will return. Everything all right? The dragon needs to speak with you. With the both of us. Both of us? Hey. That's is what I have said. And without a word, just depart the group. Sorry. Uh, just be a moment. Take your time. We'll be here. While they do that, is there anything the four of you would like to discuss? Julio's just going to walk to where they had initially uh, set foot on the island. And Imogen, just a reminder, you are privy to every conversation happening on this island, as long as you have heightened senses up. Do we want to give them their privacy, Imogen? You wouldn't be aware. It's, there's no way to tell that it's on. No, I was just saying, do we want to move? I was uh, that was uh, Maria uh, uh, saying, uh, uh. do we want to move with Julio? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not metagaming here. <laughs> sure. She's gonna offer her hand. She'll take it slow <laughs> and slowly <laughs> walk away. What about Adelaide? Adelaide stands on the island for a moment, thinking about, uh, hoping more 
that coming to Berlin was a coincidence. And knowing that there are no coincidences. And with a moment alone, several bloody tears fall down her face. All right. So back with Dragon, Yancey, and Edgar. Dragon grabs onto you, Yancey. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I... I think I need everyone to go home now. I... It's not mine to destroy, Yancey. They... They have to understand. Japheth gave it to me to protect... And if he comes back, it's not for them. And I don't want to get angry, please. I don't know what will happen if I get angry. I understand. I'll turn to Edgar and I'll say, I very much appreciate your help. And if you ever want to come back, all you have to do is ask. And anybody but Edgar that is listening to this conversation has to make wits and aspects to see if they know what I actually said. Wonderful. Imogen, because I'm, wits because and I'm using because I'm using double talk from the new yeah, book. Yeah, you are. Oh my gosh. Zach has all the tricks. <laughs> you even see I get all the cool stuff Zach can do. Maybe you will. Yancy seems really cool. I like Yancy. Oh, only one. What I actually said to Edgar uh-huh. is is do what you have to do to fix this. Edgar will nod and just say, then I need you to help me keep her alive when I bring her here. I'm pretty decent at that. Then we'll be seeing each other soon, Yancy. And Edgar will just look to the dragon, not say anything. Just smile. (sighs) He would forgive you if he could. Dragon looks to Yancey looks to you. I'm sorry. I don't understand. A part of you will. And Edgar will rejoin his family. It's worth noting that the dragon also heard what Imogen heard and not what Mm -hmm. Edgar heard. Much to Yankee's chagrin. So, you rejoin everyone at the edge of the island. Yancy, do you escort them to the edge of the island? I'll walk behind them. Mm-hmm. Sure. Everything okay, Edgar? We need to talk. All of us. Of course. When we get across the river. Would you like to... Are we leaving now? Would you like a uh, dragon to take you across the river? Yeah. I assume you don't want to swim. Rather not. This is a nice suit. Mm-hmm. So as you wait, Yancy, do you call dragon in the way that you like to? I do. Uh, it's the same that I used to call them when I was on the other side of the river. Mm-hmm. Of just that low whistle in a few minutes you see dragon skate around on the water from around you and they hold out their hand everyone take your hands please together Adelaide is going to reach out and touch uh, whoever's closest to her 
Edgar is very specifically going to put himself between Tulio and Imogen. Maria's just going to take whoever offers her hand. So Tulio <laughs> and Imogen take Edgar's hand. Adelaide has Maria's and Maria has <laughs> Imogen's. And five of you walk with this very short, demure, sad, broken, maybe brave kindred walks on the water. And as they walk, you can walk. And as you depart slowly, Yancey very tall, six foot seven Yancey watching you. Their white mask. Dragon takes you across to the other side. And as the last of you touches onto the shore, Dragon says, Shpadankamish, Kinda de Hakata. Thank you, children of the Hakata, for saving my peacocks. Please don't come back to my island without an invitation. I cannot guarantee that I will not bury you there. Understood. Do we just need to reach out to Yancy then? Dragon bows and begins walking back to the island. Adelaide will bow back. Edgar will tenderly put his suit jacket back on. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a fun adventure. Julio will, uh, as Edgar puts the suit jacket back on, just uh, look to him and say, text me what you need me. And I'm gonna, he's gonna walk off. Tulio, we need to talk. You can tell me what you need to tell me through a text message or a phone call. No. I need a fucking minute. I can't. He's gonna keep walking. Would you at least let me take you home, Tulio? No. I'll let him go if the prince wants to throw a fit. That's his right. But we do need to talk, Edgar. And she's going to say the words that are written on his back. We do Edgar does talk. not speak that language. You can say them, but it won't mean anything mm -hmm. to Edgar. Wonderful. <laughs> Edgar speaks Farsi. Well, and so does Aelin, but Aelin wrote it in mm -hmm. Arabic. Yep. There is going to be a time soon where I will need to call on each of you. And we will be returning to the Far and so Because that the singer of light is the love of my life. And my own life, and anything that comes after. What will happen when you bring them here? I will need all of you to help me make sure she lives. She's drawn to that place. She's been saying it for 11 years now. Well, you know how I feel on the subject of love and loss and you, Edgar, Eddie. I'll do what I can. Beyond love. Edgar is the name Olivia gave me. My name is Beyond Lach Dunsern. No. I would not ask this of you 
all. I don't want to ask this of you. I don't want to talk about any of this with any of you because I'm not sure if I can trust you all. But I don't have a choice. I think you do. And if what Yancey said is correct, we cannot afford Lucius Giovanni the opportunity. We should not be talking about this out here. We should get somewhere private. Agreed. Edgar's um, complex is about a five minute walk from here. For once, Edgar's very composed, very sort of easygoing charm is completely gone. He looks absolutely distraught as they make their way to Edgar's home. As you make your way to Edgar's home, Tulio, what are you doing? You don't have a car here? Uh, no, he's going to walk and um, yeah, he's he's walking home and he's he's feeling like shit and he's uh, he's trying to feel powerful again. So he's going to walk down alleys, wait for someone to start some shit. All right. As you stand there and wait to start some shit with someone, get a phone call from your mother. I'll pick up. Julio, you're not at your haven. I went by to talk to you, but you weren't there. Called away on some business, ma. You sound distraught, my son. Are you alright? It's been a poor night. You should... But I'm, uh, I'm on my way home, if you're still there. Come home to me. I'll take care of you. And we need to talk about the preparations for the family dinner anyway. And we I'll need to there. talk about your father. What about him? Not over the phone, boy. Yes, ma'am. Give Edgar, Edgar a kiss for me. Well. I'll expect you in the next 20 minutes. Understood. She hangs up. Calling an Uber. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Uber driver will start something. Now, as the four of you make your way up to Edgar's private penthouse elevator. Head up to Edgar's penthouse. Carla is still stationed at the door, uh, unmoving. But when she sees Imogen, immediately she bows deeply to Imogen. Sister. Bow back. Sister. Are you here to relieve me of my duties or are you here as a guest of our cousin? As a guest. Of course. Are he high little too? Are he high little too? You can go now, Carla. We're in for the evening. Of course. And of course you have Imogen with you. Uh, give my love to your mother, please. As always, ahi hi lily too. Ahi hi lily too. And she leaves. Edgar will go to the door and open it. Okay. Please, make yourselves at home. Everything here is very dim. The neon lights are dimmed down. And everything here is very still and quiet. I think Aelin might be sleeping. It's been a while since I've been here. I... You want her to be part of the conversation, Edgar? Let her rest. We probably should stay in the kitchen. Yeah, the bedroom's soundproof. <laughs> An improvement. You should think about the same for your place. I know a guy. I'll get you set up. Yes, please. Uh, Mama can be infuriating. Still, still a menace with the broomstick, huh? I love her to death, but yes. It's been a little less since uh, the other aunties are no longer there with us, but yes. 
All right. So. I don't know what further to see. I've said my piece. It seems like now is the time for you lot to say what you've got to see. So was the alien, alien you spoke about over the phone when we were in the car all those years ago. Hi. She is everything to me. And now you all have seen me at my most vulnerable. And I am not strong enough to kill all three of you. Nor am I strong enough to wish it. So where does that leave us? You know you have my love, Eddie. We have to figure out what to do about your mother. That is a conversation the three of you should have when I am not in the room. I need Edgar, Maria, uh, Imogen, Wits and Awareness, and Adelaide, Wits and Awareness, please. Why do my eyes keep losing awareness? <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide's like, such a small like amount. The... Four. Mm -hmm. Imogen? That's One with a bestial failure. Hmm. Three. Failure. All right, hold on to that. What thought. the fuck? Okay, so that is one, two, uh, four, uh, yeah, four. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. One, two, three, Edgar, four. Edgar, what would you five, say two, is the nearest precious object to Imogen at this moment? The nearest precious object. That's the thing with Edgar is is he has so many things none of them are really precious to him um but as far as like monetary worth i mean if if imogen is sitting in the armchair in the living room well we established uh, her all in the kitchen i assume ah uh, then in case uh, someone gets hungry <laughs> it's probably aelin's stupid bougie espresso machine mm -hmm. so um imogen you yeah. have, this has been difficult. You've heard about now the Shadowbane and Lucius, and you know so much information that you've had to hold back, say nothing, keep quiet, and it's all bottled up inside of you. With that bestial failure, you're going to take one big sweep, and knock that espresso machine onto the ground, and it's going to be very, very loud. Uh, A bubbling imagine, up you're... of emotion. The rest of you, your wits and awareness rolls were all high enough. You notice that there's something um, in the kitchen on the, um, I can't remember what you call it, uh, when you have a, a bar on a kitchen and then there's stools. There's an actual name for it, but I can't remember it. Island. I, an, an island? island, yeah, because I don't live in island. America anymore. Yeah. Or we don't have those here. Um, and you see that it looks like someone was drawing something and left it here um, and on a sketch pad. And it's two people in it. One of them is Olivia. So very clearly, Olivia captures the cold eyes, the angular features. The other one is a man you don't know, with equally cold, dark eyes, slicked back hair, and a demeanor of royalty, perhaps, standing next to each other. And then Imogen mm -hmm. knocks over Aelin's coffee machine. Sorry about that. Maria uh, was probably studying that, and she's going to hear the crash. Like, Jesus, Imogen. For clarification, uh, Edgar, Aelin's never met Mar uh, Olivia. Or seen Edgar's, what she looks like. With the noise, oh Edgar's going to quickly excuse himself and check the bedroom and make sure she didn't wake up. She absolutely woke up. Just turning the light on. Sweetheart, we have visitors. Um, family did something break is everyone okay you're i'm so sorry i'll get you a new coffee machine tomorrow night i'm so sorry should i go out or should i pretend i'm not here no i think it's high time that you met them and should i change their, fa their family wear what you please she grabs a rope Ties it around herself. Okay. Takes your hand. 
And Edgar will lead her into the kitchen. And all of you see Aelin. Um Aelin is a woman who looks like she's in her mid-40s. And long dark hair. Tan skin. And um, wearing a beige off-white uh, terry cloth bathroom. Uh, the second that Aelin enters the room, uh, Maria, who's probably looking at uh, Imogen, uh, eyes snap over and she's going to immediately activate Sensi Unseen. You should still have it active. It's been active this whole time. Oh, yeah. She glows. Adelaide, you see this too. I'm so sorry about that. About the noise. That's all right. Hello. My name is Aelin. Such a pleasure to finally meet you. I'm Maria. She's going to offer her hand. Nice to meet you, Maria. Imogen, again, I'm so sorry. It's nice to meet Edgar's heart for once. Oh, and she speaks to you in Arabic. I recognize your accent. Like, rapid fire of, like, you know, I would have said hello to you, but someone keeps you in the room when I show up, and apparently we're not allowed to be alone together. Um, and as no. soon as Aelin and um, Adelaide start speaking Arabic, Aelin does something that you would be very familiar with custom-wise, comes over and kisses you on both cheeks. Very um, common custom Arabic countries. Uh, Adelaide makes sure to touch her first, just in case. Um, kisses her back. Mm -hmm. And... Do you know what you are, Elin, or...? She looks confused. I'm... and speaks uh, in German. I'm Edgar's school. <laughs> right, Edgar? That's the right word, school? You are more than that feeble verbiage could ever describe. What happened? <laughs> Why is he talking like that? We heard that you would like to see Peacock Island. I promised Edgar I wouldn't go to Peacock Island. And for now, I believe that would be the best option for you, Aelin, until we finish having our conversation to the end. I'm so sorry. You know. I'm very confused. Do you know why you want to go there, Aelin? Um, and she looks to you, Edgar. You I, don't, are... I don't want to sound s strange to your family. I, trust me, nothing you could say would sound strange to us. Um, we but... can trust them, can't we? If you have course. nothing to fear from me. Um, the island um, sounds like a song in my ear. Does that make sense? Yes. It's attracting you? It's calling you. Perhaps. And she walks over to Edgar. She's Feeling very nervous. It's all right. There is a force at work on the island that I believe it is your destiny to contend with. Edgar, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to take that information. Why don't we go with a more simple question, Aileen? And she's going to pick up the sketch. Did you draw this? Yes. It's Do you know? Boring sometimes when Edgar is gone. And we've been together so long. And it's strange that he's not here. It's the woman hard. in that picture, did you. Have you ever met her? Um, no. She's not real. She's from my mind. <laughs> she's she's my mother. Aelin. 
am I looking at this drawing mm -hmm. and clocking who the other figure is? It's Lucius. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's Lucius. Who is he, Imogen? A very powerful, very dangerous Giovanni. Who is How do you know him? You? Who is he to you? That anger is still there mm -hmm. from before. He's my sire. Your father. No. Understood. Looking at the picture, the way you described it, they have the same eyes, Olivia and Lucius? Same expression in the eyes. Expression, okay. Lucius's eyes are very dark, and Olivia's eyes are very light. But that cold expression is extremely similar. And they are both staring well, face forward at the onlooker. And you said they were arm in arm, or just are they just standing next to each They're other? just standing next to each other. Aelin even got the clothes correctly, Imogen and Edgar. You have a gift. Minazusa. No, oh, I told you that you had a glimmer of faith about you. It's not a glimmer. What you wrote on my back earlier. I didn't write anything on your back, Edgar. It was I just I playful. It's, it's comfortable with your cousins just here. Adelaide's gonna say the words again. How do you know that? Switching to Arabic. Um, because I see it. Because I see Edgar. Edgar's heart is you. And that is very dangerous, Helen. I, I'm putting Edgar in danger, is what you're saying? Edgar's putting Edgar in danger with you. I don't think you did this. I... But we can't help who we are to people. And usually we cause either the downfall of those we love when we don't know. Then I will leave. You also can't leave, Aelin. Too many people know about you now. You're safer with Edgar for now. I don't... Please help me understand. I, I don't understand. We will speak in a commonly understood tongue in my house. You are... And switching back. You're safe here with Edgar, Aelin. And having you away from him will make Edgar. It will make Edgar, Edgar. Yes. I don't know what to say. I don't know what you want from me. I'm so sorry. I I I don't know what I don't know what's happening. I just, you should just know that we will be going to the Peacock Island, all of us, at some point. Once we hear from her. I, I don't know what the cost of 
doing this will be. But I will not lose you. Edgar, doing what? Please. You're scaring Dest me. We have to destroy something there. That's what the dragon said. It wasn't hers I to destroy. I have to destroy a dragon? No, no. The Please. dragon is the quite... Speech. The dragon's quite amiable, actually. That is their name, Aelin, is dragon. And she lives on the Peacock Island, and there's something there that you are being called to destroy. All of you who have Sense the Unseen activated, as Aelin is getting more nervous and scared, her glow is getting brighter. It's getting difficult to look at her. Uh, uh, yeah, Maria's averting her eyes at that point. Edgar would gladly singe the very retinas from <laughs> his face rather than look away. Oh my god. I think I'm seeing the power um, in action. And the moment you leave this apartment, everyone will see you glow. And I know you don't know what that means, Aelin, because you can't see the way we see. Not yet. You have a light about you. Make it and it's shining. What will make it stop? It's what would make me are. not dangerous to Edgar? You're not dangerous to me. Do I know that Edgar's blood is currently having an effect on her? Uh, and do I know that if embracing her would make that go away? You can make me an intelligence and a cult roll. On it. Uh, anyone with dots in a cult can make me that roll. Oh. <laughs> Let's do this. I do, I you, like should have, you should have dots in a cult at this point. I do, but I, I'm going to choose not to roll. All right. Five. I'm <clears throat> more curious of what she is. Never seen anything so bright. Oh, I do have a specialty <laughs> in spirits and wraiths. She's with not that. a spirit or a wraith. Oh, yeah. She's alive. Oh my god, please be a one. Oh, the oh, okay. the the All right, too. sweet. Sweet. We're good. No messy crits. No, the only thing that's alive. <laughs> and Ted is still on the back of your brother, Edgar. So <laughs> Ted went home with Tulio. Oh, you left Ted. <laughs> Ted went home with Tulio. Ted. What'd you Ted's roll, about to choke the Uber driver. Oh, uh, four. <laughs> What'd you roll, Adelaide? I'm counting. Well, so a lot. Five. Yes. So all of you have familiarity with the occult. Um, do you know what Aelin is? You could make a guess, but I think you're all too young and too inexperienced to have ever run across a mage. So your best guess is uh, some sort of uh, like latent sorcerer. You have heard that there are, especially now the Inquisition has an increased presence here. You've heard that there is uh, some magical inquisitors hanging about. True faith you've definitely heard of, so maybe it's that. But all of you would know that imbibing on vampire blood dulls whatever power humans have. Natural power, if they have it at all. But what she truly is, there is, would really be no role you could make me for you to know. You're all too young. I don't know, Aelin, exactly what you are, but I do know that what Edgar has been giving you has been helping your situation, in a manner of speaking, dulling. don't know if embracing uh, would because... embracing affect it excuse me i am so sorry absolutely if who rolled the highest successes I, uh, I think i think we adelaide and maria both right yeah I rolled five. five yeah yeah you would both know for sure that embracing Aelin would eliminate her power entirely and then she's gonna maria would then look to edgar and then say that embracing would do it i don't I, know if it would affect her in any other way though but to kill her light 
I will not hear a single more word on the fucking subject. Edgar, be kind. I'm... That was kind. She comes over to you and sees how stressed you seem. Wraps her arms around you. Edgar, I'm so, I don't. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to help you. There's nothing to be done. I brought you out here so that we could all look you in the eye and tell you that when we go back to that place, all of us together, we will all leave that place in the same way we entered it, together, as a family. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what the cost of this endeavor will be. Okay. I've had everyone come into my home when I am not dressed and it's very late and I was asleep and my espresso machine is broken. Whatever it is, and everyone can see the light getting brighter, whatever it is that you want from me to want me to do, you must tell it to, you must find out whatever it is for certain what you want from me, please. It will. Yeah, my word. Because I we do didn't. not want to go see a dragon, please, if I do not have to. All right, love. Off to bed with you. I'll join you shortly. I'm sorry. I wanted to meet Edgar's family under nicer, better circumstances. I'm supposed to go to your family dinner. Maybe that will be better. His mother told me I have to go. We'll see about that. Yeah. And I mean that in the kindest way, Aelin. And I have to agree with Adelaide there. She looks at you, Imogen. Please don't worry about the coffee machine. I'm sorry I brought it up. I'm, I'm sorry. It's getting very early. We need to bed out soon. There is one more matter we need to discuss. And Edgar will wait for Aelin to be in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. She's left. Six years ago... Sahira got a jar full of her blood. Anarchs will always be bought by anyone who has power. When was this, Edgar? Was it before or after? What happened with Sahira, if you know about this? It was before her haven was burned. She wouldn't have gone far from the blood. I need to make a call. Later, we can wait. We're going to have to kill her. And retrieve that blood. Or whatever aims we have at stopping whatever it is Lucius Giovanni has planned will fail. No one can know. No one can know. Not about... Not about me. Tulio already knows. Tulio shouldn't know. We both had our memories erased. Yeah. Is that a thing? By your sire. Yes. But were there others involved? Imogen. It's important that we know the score. I know... I know that his sister is still with him. 
and my sister is dead because of him. He killed your own family. I won't say anything more on that. You don't have to. Eleven years ago, Tulio asked me about the rumors about you, Imogen, and I gave him an honest answer. I can't fault you for that. I love my brother, but whatever interest he has in you can be manipulated to your advantage. I want to think that there is something in him. Whatever our mother sees in him, I want to think it's there. And it's not been rushed by her yet. I worry what your mother sees in him. Olivia's not the only one. My own mother is looking for to is looking to grab for Tulio. We're talking ourselves in circles, I think. So now you all know. You've seen me. Yes. And now we have to make sure no one else does. All right. Edgar will look very pointedly to Imogen. I have always given you my love. Can I trust you? Can I trust you with my secret? I. You should would... know that Osric knows, which means know. Olivia knows. I know. And. You should know, when you were brought to the city and claimed by Hannah Lori, that's when everything started to fall apart. My mother will not rest until that slight has been erased, whether that is your death or Hannah Lori's. Do you know why your mother wants the Giovanni so badly, Edgar? They are the rightful heads of the Familia. Hmm. They are the true heirs to the Hakata. She wants power and control. Mm. Are you seeing something that I'm not? No. Not yet. You asked if you could trust me, so long as I could trust you. And that doesn't come easy for me. I understand. Or kindred, trust isn't something that comes easy to any of us. Not really. We are more I 
I refuse to be defined by my state of existence. You all have things that you love and would die for. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what you would live for. And I will give every drop of Vitae in my body to make sure that each and every one of you never loosens your grip on the things that you love. On that, you have my word. Murray is going to pull herself up onto the island, a little smile on her lips, and she's going to say, You're my family, and I don't mean that just by association with the Hikata. My love is with you all. And my trust for what it is. I have no choice but to trust you all. You have every choice. There's always a choice. And this is the best one. For the time being. You also have a choice, Adelaide. Is it such a statement? Or... As rare as it is for a statement to just be a statement. You know, I have a choice. All the choices I've made have brought me here to your house. And I stand by them. And speaking of being at Edgar's house, the early morning hours are approaching. It would be very dangerous for you all to attempt to go back to your havens now. You might not make it in time. But Edgar, you do have rooms here for all of your cousins. You've got to promise that this isn't going to be weird. When have I ever made anything weird? I'm out of my love for you. I'm not going to answer that. I have rooms made up for each of you. Your names are on the door plates. Ooh. Now I'm curious to see what's inside. Thank you, cousin. Sleep here. And when we rise, I, I don't know how you all prefer to feed, but I only have cold blood. That's sufficient. I'm not a picky eater, I don't think. Adelaide's going to send a text to Isabella. Mm -hmm. She's at Edgar's. And if she wants to come, she needs to get over here immediately. Isabella texts back and says, Edgar already invited me over tomorrow night. Be safe. I love you. I love you more. On that note, Maria will also probably text mm -hmm. Catherine. Mm -hmm. Make sure she's okay. Make sure she, she's got her food in her and she's... Yeah. Uh... Catherine is for sure asleep at this point. I'm going text. to retire for the evening. Imogen, Make your spells you at home. Hannah Laurie, yes. Let her know I'm safe. Mm-hmm. Hannah Laurie responds pretty quickly. See you tomorrow. Die well. I'll see you in the morning. So as all of you make your way to Edgar's rooms for you, they're all set up fairly nicely with uh, nice sheets, blackout windows or blackout curtains on the windows rather. 
And um, it's a perfectly fine place for you to be dead for the next 12 hours. And Edgar, you're feeling that as well. So you go, is there anything you'd like to say to Aelin, or would you like to end our scene here, or our session here? Because she's not sleeping. <laughs> Edgar will just... He'll, before, like, he'll he'll turn to leave and then be like, eh, fuck it. And he'll get the French press out and he'll make her some coffee because he knows she's got to go to work and, mm -hmm. you know, like, less than a, less than an hour at this point yeah. probably uh, and after the coffee is begun to brew then he'll go to the bedroom and just sit down on the corner of the bed it smells terrible Edgar awful it kills him every single time mm -hmm. I am sorry for all of this what you want me to say to that, Edgar. This doesn't change anything. And if the price is too high, then we will not pay it. Please, I don't... I speak five, seven languages, and I don't like riddles in any of them. I'm not sure if destroying this will kill you or not. I don't know what you're talking about destroying, Edgar, please. You painted it. The Shadow Bane. It was in your paintings of the island six years ago. The one that got stuck in the garbage chute. Edgar, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. No, you must be wrong. You are destined for great things. You always have been. And it just so happens that that one of those great things is slowly approaching. And I will see you through this. As you will see me through this. Can we just lay down until you go to sleep? Until I die, Aelin. Yes. And even death cannot pull me down forever, for I would crawl from the deepest grave to come home to you. And girl lay down with her and just nestle his face in her hair. Whenever you do that, she always shivers and forget because you are so cold. Wish life just to warm up a little bit. <laughs> and as we move away from that, as the sun begins to rise and all of you turn limp, turn dead for the day sleep. That is where we are going to end our very first, very intense, my goodness, episode of Berlin Bloodlines, A Dragon Amongst Peacocks for this evening. I want to thank you all so very much for exceptional performances. And we can't thank everyone because some some people had to leave. But um, uh, I'm beaming. I'm the happiest storyteller in the goddamn world right now. Thank you everyone so much. My goodness. <laughs>